Music matters. Music Off rip. Matters. In the building. <laughs> Indeed. We How are we doing, gentlemen? Lovely. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you guys for doing this. Bro, we it's are honored, pleasure. bro. Yeah, the, the, this is a fun one. I was, I, was, I, uh, I think I say this a lot, but I, I enjoy doing the industry one sometimes, like not more than musician stuff. Cause that's what I'm in love with, right? But the musician stuff is like the norm. Like I feel like I do so many musician interviews, and I love them, of course. But it's like, I don't know, something about like talking to like the more industry side of stuff can be more interesting to me because I feel like that is my world a bit more you know as much as i'm also a musician i love that but i guess you guys are all same thing kind of right you guys are all in the industry yeah. plus make music absolutely right it's like yeah. whether whether you like it or not you're in the industry if you're an artist you have to yeah. be part you have to learn to at least play some of it so yeah we all Fuck came the from industry yeah <laughs> <laughs> i had this thought the other day i was talking about somebody specifically and i was thinking it is so easy to tell when somebody is a music person that got into business versus a business person that got into music 100%. like there's right. such a clear distinction you know yeah. you know what i mean yeah for yeah. sure yeah i think there's a lot of mistrust between people that work people that work in music that were once musicians and people that weren't I interesting think you, you, it's sort of, it it cuz for some people it can be a rite of passage you know mm -hmm. what I mean? it's yeah. important that you kind of get to learn a bit of the craft yeah. but even so it's like it's always a good thing when someone's doing like industry shit cuz it's like if you're really just business savvy yeah could work in any fucking business. Yeah, and there's more money. Shows other, music because you yeah. love music, and like it's not an easy fucking industry to work in. So yeah, you gotta have some love for music to you know mm. be dealing with all the bullshit that. Comes well, that's why it's it. scary though, is that music has become more lucrative than ever, and now it, it, it is that kind. Of, like it used to be the kind of thing where if you were, if you were growing up and you wanted to work in music, your mom would be like, you know, oh, good, good fucking luck with that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, mom, I'm gonna go into music or I'm gonna be a musician. It's like it never really used to be the kind of thing that people thought was gonna bring you a lot of money, mm -hmm. and now it is. So you get people that never would have given a damn about music. Their lives being like, oh, I can make a buck off this, so let me be a part of this world. <laughs> I've and never that's thought about it like that. The scariest part about music now, I think, is people that just wouldn't have ever cared. Yeah. Unless they were like, oh shit. Especially as 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 it's gotten more techy over time. Yeah. Like there's a lot that's more room for someone that may go work at Amazon for coding to be like, honestly, let me just work for this label. Yeah. And like, you know. Yeah. It's all about the cloud too. I feel like crazy. too. Uh -huh. Like a lot of people like just while they would be motivated by money, or they would also be motivated by the clout. You know. Yeah. Because yeah. like people. Or both. Yeah, yeah. Or both. Yeah. Like yeah. The music tech angle is an interesting thing. I guess I've never thought about that, right? Because it's like, I I mean maybe it's just because I love music so much, but I've never personally been like. I would be interested in music tech from a monetary perspective yeah. because I yeah. just think it's interesting from a musical perspective. We're seeing a lot of like just tech startups yeah, taking dude. over yeah. a lot of roles that would be, you know, your yeah. standard record label or, you know, distribution, distribution yeah. or marketing. That's the interesting one, I so think. Yeah. It's interesting, it's dangerous, and it's, you know, it's also machines helpful. Involved. Yeah. It depends how you use it. I mean, this is no hate to this company. This just came to my mind. And yeah. like, I, th I think they're a cool company. But like, un like Untitled, for example, right? right. Mm. Like, comes out of Huge. nowhere. nowhere. Like, comes out of nowhere, I, randomly. This week in, we, I was just talking about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> At the <name> store. <laughs> <laughs> not every single artist that we work with now, are all, all everybody's using it, yeah. and they're all. And none of them. It's not like they found it from each other. They all. Yeah. Had, they all live in different states. They all found it completely independently of each other. It's just completely yeah. taken over the game. That's what I mean. Like, 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 what's kind of scary is like. Well, I don't know if it's scary, but like theoretically, right? Like, there's no way that like Untitled doesn't become a distro company eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Like, no, there's no, no yeah. way they don't. Mm -hmm. Bro, like FL is not a distro company. What? <laughs> well, I don't can, I didn't you, know that. They have a partnership where you can upload your music directly through. You don't even have to leave. That's kind of sick. Loose. Bonkers, dude. It is crazy. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's in one way making less barriers for the artists. Yeah. But then it gets to that whole other thing where it's like, we all saw that like over 100,000 songs are released on Spotify every day. Every day. Right. Yeah, so yeah, think about insane. the fact that I could make like 20 beats right now on FL and put 20 songs yeah. out. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's the new that's the new saturation yeah. you know do you guys think like as management do you guys feel that district companies are like going to replace the indie label like do you think there's a world where like we are experiencing either distro or major like well, that's a great question or no way. Mm. I, I i think that it's becoming it's more cut and dry who's deciding to go down a major path yeah and that's something i can really knock you there uh -huh. if you are the kind of artist that wants to sell out arenas all over the world and be on billboards everywhere and top charts forever and ever that's just you need a, a big caliber team at yeah this point. there's just so many working pieces it's such a big machine yeah you need that label it'd be yeah. hard to cut it'd out be really really short but 
Now it's just everybody so in the middle distros. can kind of yeah. Do But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you know what I mean, though? that point, you could, There's you a could lot of different routes yeah. to build yourself up to that level. Yeah. And you don't even have 100%. to take it at that point. That's where you kind of come to a crossroads of like, okay, now I can do this major yeah. thing. Or I can do this independently and maybe not reach as many people, but I can reach you know, a solid amount of yeah. people that will all support me and, and, and my master on everything you yeah know? i don't have to give it all away to some bigger company yeah i mean that's an interesting idea too it's like there really is only because i don't know i think most people feel this way generally in the, in the new industry at least that like i'm sort of the belief that like signing to a major is like beneficial for a very very slim percentage of artists yeah and i feel it, it's, it's interesting right i was talking about this today but this is like in like and totally this is not even musical at all uh-huh. but i was saying how it's interesting how just talking to a friend about this but i was saying how it's interesting how we look at college as like the correct solution for every kid out of high school and it's interesting because that's how majors used to be viewed for every artist it's like yeah. that was the goal right 100%. it was like that was what radio you were doing it for to be the goal that too like yeah now it's nuts and i love the radio because my uh, aux cord doesn't work in my car so i just have <laughs> <laughs> to listen to the radio yeah it's sick because i, I kind of i got a kick out of that yeah and i like just you know and i listen to a lot of older stations so it's not like i'm finding new music per se but i think about that all the time it's like wow think about like almost famous and shit like that yeah it's like, you know you hear your joint on the radio and it's like i fucking made I it that. if you like yeah. zoom out right it's like so the radio and the record label like used to be the direct connection <laughs> to the fans right spotify yeah you know and so yeah the direct you couldn't just go put your record on a shelf you had to have a, a record label actually press it, do yeah. all of that. So right now we're, we're in an area where it's a lot different and we're going direct to consumer. And the direct to consumer stuff, mm-hmm. you don't really need that type of, any of that extra fluff, you know? You can just limit and cut. And I think like that, that brings up a yeah. good point of how you, how you said you could just do distro, you don't have to do indie label, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's a new it's a new playing field I yeah think. we also need to kind of rethink the way that we are supporting artists i, I mm. feel like a lot of fans that are more passive and like it's one thing to kind of kind of keep up with the music industry and kind of be in the know about what's going on yeah. and what's happening but the average person does when i go home for thanksgiving and talk to my extended family members yeah. about the, the music and how it's going most when i tell them how much an artist makes per stream on spotify they're like appalled yeah most people don't like just don't know that yeah like the average Why listener would and yeah. a lot of people think that by streaming an artist they supporting are supporting them exactly yeah. not yeah. and you used to have all. to pay fucking 4.99 on itunes to right. buy a record it created this yeah. stigma like deep state industry whatever you want to call yeah. it of like oh like I I this to stream music it should be free it, I, I shouldn't have to pay an artist to listen to their music mm. which is insane I mean even I I you know when you were like younger and you like first bought a fucking app maybe like if, if I saw an app was like 99 cents like, I was like holy no. yeah. shit they're out there mine yes <laughs> <laughs> 99 cents I was like hell no it's to a be way. free yeah. like yeah. They, they're losing me as a customer and it's like what like they literally just developed yeah. an entire like world within yeah. this app for me to use and for me to pay less than a dollar to use it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a and I'll go to the dollar. fucking store and buy some shit like that yeah. I'll use for 15 minutes yeah so. I'll go buy a beer for three 375 and exactly. not like the link and I yeah, exactly. straight up. So yeah. it's like, you know, why are we, you know, why are we go to the, the liquor store and buy these tall boys, but we wouldn't buy an album we could listen to forever yeah. with an artist that we yeah. literally claim we love and that, you know, we would idea. walk to the yeah. end of the earth or we would listen to them on a, if it was all we had left on a, you know, a, on an island yeah. abandoned, but we wouldn't fucking 100%. send them $5 for their album. And it's crazy yeah. that people buy records just to bang on their wall or put on a mantle and they don't even have a fucking right. record player. It's yeah. just like buying physical music is now a novelty thing and it's just to fucking have cool shit in your room. Yeah. It's yeah. not about, you, you, you don't even have a fucking That's way That's why it's important to. for artists that they have to guide their fans nowadays yeah. to how they can support because if they don't, then people will think that streaming will somehow help when it's not going to help at all. But you got to create pathways for them, you know, to support you independently. Yeah. Which is just, it's not an easy thing to do, but you're doing yourself a huge justice mm-hmm. if you don't yeah. think about it and try. It's an, it makes me kind of question, like, I wonder if, like, it, at least the value structure in music, right? If that would be better if music still costed money. And th- it's an interesting idea because I feel like with most things, I don't feel that way, right? Most of the, like, I, I don't look at healthcare and I'm like, oh, like, yeah. this should be more expensive, so I'll value yeah. it more. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get, you know, or, or like, I don't, I don't look, look at college and I'm like, yeah. you know, that should be more expensive, so I value it. But with music, it's like, I don't think it has to be expensive, but 
something about it being free. There's, like, a, there's a level of fairness, I feel like, that I you agree. feel like is fair. Like, it's the same way where it's like, bro, if, I, if someone right now said, yo, I got Drake tickets for $50, You'd be like, bro, I'm in. Yeah. If someone said I got Drake tickets for five thousand dollars, you'd be like, bro, he's taxing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's a level of fairness that I feel like the consumer ultimately judges, but I don't know. Yeah, I think this really comes down to a convenience thing for a lot of people. Yeah. It's like, you know, and I can't blame them on that fact either. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm a lot of people listen to music in ways of. Oh, I'm gonna just get in my car and go, and I'm gonna listen to a bunch of different artists on Spotify, whatever. Uh -huh. And like, if it's like, oh, this one artist is selling their record on a different platform and not on Spotify, and now, oh, I'm in the car and I have to switch to a whole new thing and you know do yeah. whatever. It's like, dude, it's too much. You know, I, I'm down to support you, but like, you know, yeah. I can't, I can't do all that just to listen to your record. Uh -huh. So how do we make it convenient for people to support artists? Yes, I mean, it's simultaneously too though. Like, think about this, right? Like, I, I think. Hurt people are attracted to art very often. I think, unfortunately, hurt people come from very underprivileged backgrounds very often, right? So, with that being said, like, think about all the people that like would not have become musicians if they weren't inspired by music because they didn't have access to it. Absolutely, you know, like yep. that's an interesting thought too. Like, I feel mm. like some of the best art I've ever heard comes and just period comes out of pain, yeah. you know. And people obviously who grow up in like less fortunate situations are going through that same level of pain. 100%. So interestingly, like they might not be making music if they didn't have access to yeah. it for free. So like in that way, is it a good thing? You know, it's such a double-edged sword. Absolutely. That's weird. No, that's a really great kind of flip side to the whole thing too. And I think that that's kind of one of the reasons I also don't, I'm not a big, and people can take this however they want, but I'm not a big believer in bad music. Just because oh, I, I totally, dude, I got in a, one of the biggest arguments in my life over this, but sorry, yeah. continue. I just don't, yeah, no, it's a good, it's a great argument to have. Yeah. I just don't think that that's real. I, I, you can You can have music that you don't like. Yeah. But it just doesn't make it bad. It's the same way as you could go to, you know, a restaurant with a, with a you know, Michelin star with a chef that you know is making an amazing dish and maybe he uses some ingredients, some flavors you don't aren't for you that you've always never liked. And then you don't you don't fuck with the dish. And that's fine. That doesn't mean it's not good. And I sort of feel the same way about about music. And there's yeah. no bad stuff. And so I, and I think that's why Kids having access to it, especially kids, is so important because there's yeah. it's not you we can't critique that. Mm -hmm. That's just sort of therapy, and that's just you know art being you know accessible to young people, yeah. which I think is super important. So and and that should come at no cost. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really it, it, all the problems that we have as artists, and managers, and people trying to make it in the industry. Like the solution, I think, is all in the fans' hands. Mm. It's like how do you know? How, no, it is like how do we like you know, how do we come together as the people and the fans of music to support artists financially yeah. to the point where they don't need to give away like the ownership of their music? Yeah. And then also how do we, you know, but, there's there's a, a different yeah. lane of it too that I was, I was seeing earlier, you know, someone was talking about like Playboy Cardi and how, you know, he tries a bunch of, you know, new stuff now and, and new looks and things that, you know, he gets ridiculed a lot for and it's like, okay like yeah maybe you don't like it but if you start shunning artists for trying things yeah like let artists just try stuff and and do and be weird and yeah. like yeah. you know and if we shun that and and we just tell them to fit in this mold then like how are artists going to grow how are we yeah. going to progress how are we going to progress how is anything new going to blossom responding know? to your your first point but then also your second because i yeah. think they're both really interesting I totally agree with you, but the, I think the reality is also that like most people, like ninety five percent of music listeners, don't even understand the concept of master ownership, like because they don't have to, they just yeah. don't, you know, like yeah, yeah. It, it's not their world. Well, so the scary like, part is that neither do a lot of artists. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, and because art, yeah. and, and 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 also they're not entitled, and and they shouldn't have to be. I mean, they're is, dealing with master manipulators. Yeah, it's yeah. insane, yeah. And, and it's like you said, you know, art, like art comes from pain people, and like a lot of the most wonderful artists that I know are also very like kind of quirky and eccentric characters that you know can yeah. give a damn about paperwork and any of that. They just they make music that comes from their soul and their their bodies. It's it's just it's second nature. And, and if yeah. you were to say, hey, so how do you feel about kind of ma like owning your masters? They'd be like, what? Well, what is what's that? And yeah. What, and what? And I don't think they have to. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be such a big deal, but yeah. it is, and it's so crucial. And obviously, it is. A, it is. Big, people have made it a big deal. Yeah. It sucks that it has to be. It sucks that we can't just like rely on people who love art to get into the industry that supplies the funding to art. You know, like it, it's so ironic that like 
<laughs> I'm sure you guys relate to this. Like, I feel like I've met some industry, some more industry adjacent folk that don't even feel like they love music. Like mm-hmm. the idea of like working in music that and not having yeah, like an outward rough. love for music is insane yeah, to me. Yeah, sense. it's I'm, like marrying somebody you don't love. A hundred percent. You know, and, and I get the like you know a dude that works in a pizza parlor doesn't go home and make pizza, but it almost for sure. that, there should be an exception with music where like you should still probably go it's home an and exception. listen to some fucking music. Mm-hmm. Like I think that you should always and I and I always second guess dude, yeah. people who don't. And there's a lot of just tiresome days and nights where you're up and you're doing stuff at yeah. crazy hours and it's like. What's gonna get me through this is the love for it. You yeah. gotta love what you're doing. 100%. In life, general, but specifically with this, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that can like fundamentally be my problem with like corporatism within music, just generally on like yeah. a more general basis. Is like the idea that like I don't know if it makes sense to exist within music if you're not fueled by emotion. Yeah. Like, like, and and. I don't think corporatism is like an emotional thing, which is interesting, right? Because like the sole purpose of a corporation generally is monetary gain. That's just like definition wise, that is the sole purpose of corporation. Yeah. If the majors are, exi- are existing and participating in music on a corporate level, there's no emotion behind it. But I don't know if you no. truly can exist in music, which is something that is inherently born out of emotion without feel like your decisions being they guided by emotions there. but then yeah. it, they get you know? too far down a road and yeah. they lose it as like you know any you see time after time people yeah like and come into situations of money where maybe they got there because they did have this yeah. emotion and they had this passion for whatever industry they were working in you get all this money and all this power that shit that shit will change you like, yeah that yeah. shit will make you want things that like are you know lawless and and and, and make you feel like you're more in power well, you get it also to that takes power. away a lot of the pain it takes away the <laughs> yeah. pain that creates yeah. that sure. great art yeah it's crazy it's nuts and yeah like these the top of the top in the music industry they don't care about the artists no and, and they want you dead and so they can promote your music while you're dead and they want you fucking like they, they, they just don't care about your actual life and the, and the emotion and the, the fans or anything about that. Yeah. They, they just want to, like, m- build something up to the point where they're making the most money off it that they possibly can. How do you, as three, three people that have been in music for a long time, how do you keep that love of it? On the days where, like, this shit is, like, incredibly difficult. Like, you know, there's something, you know, whether it's, like, a very difficult, you know, problem that comes out with a client or, you know, the, there was a meeting that went wrong or whatever, different issues. Like, how do you remember that love for it? Like, do you have certain thoughts, things you go back to? I don't think I ever blame it on music. Interesting. Okay. It's yeah. Not, it's not music's fault. Yeah. And if I have a shitty day because of some shitty thing that happened with work as it pertains to, like, the music industry... It's not the fault of the art. Yeah. It's just the, sh- the shitty people that we're I surrounding. It makes, <laughs> yeah, it makes you appreciate a final product, you know, even more. Like, mm. you see day to day all the BS that you have to go through to get a waiver form or whatever it may be. And it's like, damn, like, the people that when we were, like, seven, eight years old or middle in our adolescence, you know what I mean? It always goes back to that type of music for me, and if you think about that, you draw a parallel, and then it's like, damn, yeah, we yeah. are we are inspiring the next generation, and we're pushing the people who are, you know. So yeah. that's really important. Yeah, I feel like for us, you yeah. know, we're building something that's our own. You yeah, know, we could all go out right now and work for one of these bigger companies mm-hmm. with what with our resume, no problem, right? But like. We're not here to work for the man. We're not trying to do any of that. We get satisfaction, you know, building something up and being a part of building other people up. And, yeah. And, and trying to, you know, because, you know, with all the artists we work with, you know, Cisco, Wakai, all these guys, it's like, they, their artistry is, is something that none of us could ever do ourselves mm-hmm. because they are them. As is our artistry is our own and they couldn't do what we do. But vicariously, we get to live through their artistry because we're a part of it and we fill in, you know, voids and holes that they can't, you know, that's the most fulfilling shit ever. To be able to know that I contributed to somebody else's vision and that's something that I would have never been able to do 
by myself is huge and all the hard work that comes with it then pays off in moments like that where I'm you know sitting back watching them on stage and and, and seeing some crazy performance go down you know like that should bring a tear to our eye and that's what it's really you know all about right there yeah mm-hmm. that's beautiful and I also think like the difference in like what you guys are doing versus like the more corporate major side of things is like the idea of building a really, really tight knit community that extends further than like where the money goes. Yeah, you know, 100%. I think that is like, I mean, that's like all of this, like above the bridge, like my biggest. Go- There's a, a whiteboard over there. Um, it's like how I see the entire like conglomerate of above the bridge and all the businesses that I got a similar go thing in, uh, in my room. Actually. Sick. I, I call yeah. it. I call it. Uh, Revenue roulette. Revenue. <laughs> it's literally just the, yeah. Hell yeah. Same shit. Uh, at, at the middle, it says that, that little in parentheses in the black, it says community. And that's like the best what thing. I think is the biggest, most underlying, like overarching like Absolutely. theme through everything. 100%. It's like, like building I feel like the we're, people. We're like activists, like going to war. Like, yeah. And that's what I feel like yeah. our job is. It's like yeah. we have like an army and like different sectors and we're fighting the machine. And yeah. like, yeah. we're like, making strides and like going to war for people like that we, we just love and care we about. We read a lot of books about like, I'm, I'm reading one right now, a lot of us read shit about like revolutionary stuff. Yeah. And, and then like a lot of the ways that like that came together, you know, whether that's in different places all around the world and like, that's sort of what we're bringing to this is like a revolutionary mindset mm. where it's like, we're empowering ourselves, we're empowering the people we work with and we're creating a community and just a group of people to fight that fight. And like, if we're here to give more resources to that, or you feel me, get the weapons that we need or the tools, whatever it is, like. Our mentality's crazy, our minds is crazy. It's like, all this industry is, is like, okay, let's, you know, people come in, they're like, yo, I can offer you this, you don't know how to do this. Oh, you can't do this without me. We're like, nah, dude, like, we'll literally learn how to do any and everything (laughs) and be like, fuck all of you guys. Like, we'll literally do it ourselves. Like, you pay us. Fuck you. (laughs) What do you think? (laughs) 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 With that being said, like, what do you think the next model is? Like, what is it that, like, what is the void that you think you can fill and what do you think is the next model? It's like we were talking about it. It's like we are talking about the Vave store. I think it's sort of what we've been trying to do, which is being people that are, like, unequivocally unconditionally in our artist corner mm-hmm. and and yeah. and before like and we're their friends and i think like a lot of the people that i work with whether they're my business partners or like artists that i will represent are people that i also just like you know my artists have stayed in my well kai was with me for thanksgiving with my family you know that's it's so very cool it's very like we are we're friends and i think that that's super important and and that's something that i think needs to take over again that's sort of the yeah. answer to that it's just people Bringing, why can't the business side of your team just be the dudes that you were hanging out with before? It doesn't have to be these guys in suits that come in and like, like take like charge. The, yeah. It can just be your friends. Just they, the middle of your thing, like you said, yeah. it's community. Like 100%. we need to be able to teach all of our brothers and sisters how to do all this shit. Like. The reason people are in power in this industry is because they gatekeep knowledge and connections so that they can then offer it to you and profit off of of your magic that you're able to create. It's like, if everyone, like if artists knew how to, you know, like whatever, you know, everything that came with, you know, running a a, a business that is music, they would, they, they can do it. Like, it's not that hard. It's like, it just takes a team of people you trust. You know, but the problem is, it, it takes ten thousand hours to become a master musician. And it also takes ten thousand hours to run a masterful business. Right. You know, so it's yeah. not you can't do it yourself. You, you can't do it yourself. Yeah. 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 You need to surround yourself with a community of family yeah. and people and friends that you really just like, trust and they have been around you forever. It's like anybody can be a manager. Yeah. And, you know, like we, like we stepped into this shit not knowing a damn thing about the yeah. industry not, and just got thrown thing. in situations, yeah. and now I know how to do like. A million different things because I've I just dealt with it and I've figured it out. I feel and the now, same way. Yeah. If it comes yeah. up again, I'm like, oh no, don't worry, I already know what the fuck to do. It's yeah. like I feel the exact same way, dude. Yeah. Like I feel like, like when I first started above the bridge, I made a routine every single day in my parents' house in Concord, California, to go on YouTube and learn something. Mm-hmm. I did that every single day, mm-hmm. and it was like 
it was a part of what I did every single day. And it was yeah. like it was like learn how to do something in Premiere, yeah. learn this thing in After Effects, learn this thing about my camera, learn this thing about the music industry, learn this thing about signing artists, like learn this about artist development, learn this about throwing shows, learn like whatever it was. It yeah. was just like the concept of learning and every that single energy day. Will like just carry over. Like yeah. if you are if you have a mindset that's you know. I need to accomplish this. Like this, my soul is irking yeah. to to learn this thing or to you know go and research this and and figure out how to do something because I'm trying to reach this goal. Like that's exactly what gets yeah. you there. You know, it's like yeah. if you put that energy in, like you're going to get you know, the the universe will come full circle and, mm. and and present you with the opportunity to exercise. And that's why I think it's important that people that work in music m- maintain. Like music needs to be an integral part of your life. It sort of yes. should be intrinsic to the way that you 100%. live. Hundred percent. And and if it's not, then you have that kind of work. Like I think part of the reason this has worked is because it's our life. Like I, it's like not only do I have a close relationship with my artist, but I live with Nick. I've, yeah. Me and Kip have known each other for like upwards of ten years. We went to high school together. There's something that comes with it, it just being my life. In addition to my yeah. job, it's just the yeah. life that I lead every single day. I just spend all of my time in a world that in one way or another sort of pertains to music. Yeah. And going off that, I feel like for us too, it's like we care about the music so much in terms of the grand scope of things. Like we're just truly fans of like all of us come from like a deep love of rap and hip hop and R and B and just to see like the state of where it's at now versus just when we were at when we were kids i feel like a lot of us are just really fueled by like doing what we can to, to you know do our part to put it in the right direction yeah you know? right how, music, how old are you guys i'm 25 24 okay yeah. that. We're both that since 25. go ahead i'm sorry i cut you off no you're good i was just gonna say like just based off what nick was saying like that love and you know for music itself is what really brought us all together yeah and what brought us this far is i'd say like the love that we have for each other like the fact that i know that these guys like share the same dream as me like Mm. not just like oh we want to you know work in music or you know be an artist like these guys are like working towards the same goal that i have like i can't fail this man i can't fail him Mm. like i go to war every day because i know that like if I give up, it's not just me who's giving up. It's him that's giving up. It's him that's giving Let up. Cry it's on all the my artists who are giving up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can't. Like there's a level of accountability that that gets implemented there, and it's like it's regiment. It's like these guys are are my soldiers, my family. It's like, you know, when you sh- when you share that passion with other people and those dreams, like the manifestation will bring you guys far. And like that's what I try to preach the most to people. It's like you know, like build with people that you love and trust and that like, you know, like, cause, cause all these people, like in like well, with all the corporate industry, like they feel like they're in competition with each other, yeah. you know, like they're all yeah. working for a check. They're not working off a dream. They don't exactly. even know each other's middle names. They don't know each other's middle know. names. They don't know any about yeah. anything about yeah. that. And it's like, you know, if, you go, if, if I was going to work every day at a corporate and the man, next to me in the cubicle over was you know competing with me for my paycheck like i'm a gatekeep the shit yeah, <laughs> of my for him you know what i'm saying but if i know like but at the end of the day like it's on all of us to accomplish this goal together like were you guys building things individually by yourself and if so did you ever fear that you wouldn't find those trusty confidants because i feel like this is interesting, right? I was thinking about this um, actually today when I was like writing out questions and just researching you guys a bit. I think there are a lot of really successful companies, not only in art, but in all kinds of things, that start with three people. And I don't even think I realized it. Mm-hmm. Like, nice there, yeah, I think there's a lot of them. And I think it's really, really valuable you guys found each other like that. So you all, explain to me like kind of the origins. You guys all met in, in college, right? And when did it click and when did you know it was right? So shit, we first met uh, like first couple of days of college before it even started. In Chicago? In, in New, New Orleans. Orleans. New Orleans, okay. New Orleans, yeah. Well, so me and I went to high school together in New York. He's a native to LA. Gotcha. So we kind of met in the middle in college in New Orleans. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I met Nick first because he lived on the same floor as me in freshman years in the dorms. And Kip was the one that kind of convinced me to go to that school. So in a way... Because you guys were friends in high school? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So this is all Kip's fault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> so, so to speak towards your previous point, when I was out here, when I was growing up here in LA, like I was, I already got into music and 
throwing events and all and performing all this stuff when I was still in high school, like early high school. So by the time like I was going to college, like the same consistency happened with me where it was really hard at least in LA at the time to build with people yeah. around my my you know what I mean like coming up with me so that was definitely something that I knew was like it's not gonna really it's not happening right now here yeah. it's hard to do this and that was just sort of like the environment at the time I don't know what it was that's a whole other conversation but when we went down to New Orleans I think we all had a very similar goal in mind of just like really just pursuing our interests and we all were brought down there because of music yeah. and it was never things. this though really yeah it was never it was really never this. we just yeah. really we just realized that like we were all just you know a bunch of random guys that were trying to write cool raps and they were cool raps but at the end of the day like there was a bunch of other people just like us and what's going to set us apart you know what i'm saying yeah when we pulled our resources together as a trio like all of a sudden we were this the center of attention we were the you know we had things that other people didn't we had more resources more strength more conversing and support systems than anybody trying to do it by themselves and that carried over people recognized that and wanted to be a part of what we were creating just with our friendship like we had a friendship that turned into a community of people being like mm. that's something i want to be a part of like yeah. i want to be a part of a like-minded community yep. i also mm. think that we can't sort of explain our origins without mentioning our house okay which was a pretty big deal in that and in and, and sort of the center of that community yeah and it was just what the, the house that we happened to live in for three the three and these guys were lucky i, I moved in a year late uh -huh. but they got to move off campus and we all did our sophomore year and then there was just this big beautiful white house that was kind of creepy but kind of beautiful <laughs> right next to campus and it, it just became this sort of we almost had an open door policy and we would shell out our furniture every saturday and host shows and they ranged from all, all and we would do those different kinds of artists and it sort of became a and it just became a thing people knew it as the Offrip House. And it's funny to me now that So people, Offrip, sorry to cut you off, but uh, just for Offrip was the name of our group that was just a musical group. Like we got booked group. for a show, and it was us three, and they were like, Oh yeah, we need to tell this one. We were like, uh, I don't know. And then yeah. we just kind of brainstormed, no one even remembers. Well, no, at first it was Nick Coleman and two special guests. Oh yeah, someone like misspelled. <laughs> our first show blind. ever was <laughs> Nick's yeah. name misspelled, yeah. and then two plus two mystery guests. Like TDA, like, yeah, like, like yeah. or whatever, TB. TBD, yeah. TBD, yeah, to be determined, and it was fucked. So yeah. we had to come up with a name. Off -rip, Off -rip, was it? felt right. Off Rip was like us going against the grain, you know, us three hopping on stage, and like, you know, no one knows what to expect when they see us three hopping yeah. on stage. <laughs> nothing but a DJ. So they're like, what the fuck is this? Like some Beastie Boys revival shit. <laughs> but we're spitting hard, and heads are like, okay, this is actually fire. Like, that's Off Rip. It's like, you look at us, you're like, this is about to be fucking corny or some shit. And then yeah. all of a sudden we're like, they're like, wait, okay, this is actually insane. Yeah. So, you know, people are it's fucking instant with instant reaction. Reaction. Instant yeah. reaction, that instant change. And then, you know, us going against the grain with every, all of our mindset of just like, you know. So, all right, whatever, I'm going to take the baton from here. So basically, <laughs> then, <laughs> at, this point, at this point, we're it. throwing events. We're performing at these events. And we're also hosting hosting people gotcha. from New Orleans, talent around the city. So okay. like people from mixed with from our school. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. we got gotcha. we got like DJs from the school performing. We got people who are born and raised in New Orleans, yeah. born and raised in Baton Rouge or Lafayette, Louisiana, pulling up and performing with us. And at that point in time, like we're throwing all these events, like Kip said, damn near every weekend. We we get everything popping. And then we get a little shutdown with the virus. And then basically at that point, we sort of pivoted. And we were like, you yeah, know. We like made an LLC with the intent of being an events company. Because we made an LLC because oh. because we wanted limited liability like when we shit. wanted to throw <laughs> events. Like, you feel me? We're crashing through. Oh, <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. So like. Because it, of the nature of the shows that you were throwing. Yeah. yeah. Like gotcha. we needed to limit our liability. Offer was a lengthy. St it's <laughs> weird. It's fun. I was going to say it's funny to me that people now that know us professionally like don't know about that house. Like to a yeah, lot of people, that's super interesting. People like, like for New Orleans, like genuinely, like it's silly to say that like this little house, not little, but it was like it was a New Orleans like old two lane frat house, but yeah. like 
it, it became like a CBGB's like type Whoa. of feel where it was like people would come to this house with like the intent of like I'm about to meet like a lot of creatives tonight and like I can meet the love of my life in this house tonight. I, you know, it <laughs> was know, like we know people was, who've gotten married off of meeting what? people. No, yes. like this house yeah. like up. created a lot of like, really really like insane long term like emotion and memory for yeah. people that like it's one of I personally feel like our greatest accomplishments as yeah. on yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. 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 like that right there like yeah. community and it yeah. was yeah. it was Big community time. and it was just like it was just and, so and we got to give a shout out to like just the city of New Orleans because as like a place like it, it is the perfect place to foster like well, slept on place uh, on the upcoming yeah. like, <laughs> like musician like just they were so like open arms to us as like outsiders you know not from there but we really intertwined with everyone there and really made something beautiful you know yeah, yeah. can can you uh like tell me more about New Orleans. I, I've never been in New Orleans. I don't feel like I know nothing about it, but I know that it's like a historically musical town. Yeah. So, but I mean, like, it's an enormous jazz city. Yeah. Like, colloquially, kind of the birthplace uh -huh. of jazz. Um, Louis Armstrong. But in addition to that, is just one of the most. I mean, it's because I think it's it's sort of feels very not American in a way, and I mean in a very good way. Yeah. Like I think when I when I went to school, that it felt like I was studying abroad. Yeah, it's the most abroad. It, it feels like I'm in a different city. Place. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It, and and the architecture, you know, spans. It's it's such a melting pot of so many different influences. You got Spanish and French and Creole, and, and there's so many different like. The history is so deep. Yeah. You know, massive Vietnamese yeah. population. There's what? all kinds of yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, people fled there um, like during like past Vietnam wars, and that's really why like like sh the shrimping population is so strong there. Like a lot of oh. uh, the sh like people that shrimp down there, like even you know, like Forrest Gump mm -hmm. and they're shrimping like that's like New Orleans shit. Like, it's all like. Um, that, that there's a whole wave of people that came down just from for doing that. Gotcha. It's interesting. And also just gets slammed with natural disasters every other year. So yeah. the community there is very like for the people by the people and there's just such a tight knit community and you really have to want to live there to live there. Yeah. And which is a reason also that there isn't a lot of big industry there. Yeah. There's you know you don't get the oil and gas. Yeah. 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 That yeah. Is. Yeah. Entertainment. Yeah. entertainment. No, entertainment wise though. There's nobody no label wants to play. But people don't know that there. New Orleans has the biggest live market in the entire US. 100%. Over Nashville it, 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 it's like Nashville adjacent, right? It's yeah. like absolutely. That's crazy. It's just Same. in a swamp, and so nobody wants but to. But it, it really is yeah. an open, open door policy there. If you have respect for the city, yeah. and you know you're willing to be a part of it, like they're gonna accept you. Why did you guys want to go to school there? Like, like what drew you there? It's New Orleans. It's like it just drew you. You know, I was either gonna go Lil there Wayne. for like an <laughs> <laughs> school in New York. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, dude, like, fuck yeah. yeah dude. Like, it, it was just I, we. Were, I would personally was like researching like music industry programs for school because I knew yeah. I wanted to do it and it was yeah like I said it's either upstate New York school or I'm gonna go to New Orleans yeah. I was like yeah let's do it so but yeah when, I feel like there, I feel like right when we got there like it's just like it's one of those things where you know it's just like the universe like you gotta put out what you're trying to get back type yeah. shit and we just like very much so like made a conscious decision like around our second year there that we like our main purpose here is not to be super active in the college scene and really to like expand and intertwine the college scene and the local scene. So that's where we got linked up with like all of these artists and like um, like like the first artist that we yeah. ever managed with Kai like was through you know performing with him throwing shows with and him. even he dropped out i'd say nick is almost my only f like one of my only friends there's like it's like i'm like johnny there's like, it's like yeah. a couple other people like nick i really don't have that many friends from college it's, it's so many more from the greater city of new orleans and That's from so interesting that place and that it was so important to us and to our beginnings new i know it's definitely what we accredit to to the, what is off rip now today i know a lot of people who like um like i i have, I have two really close friends that um, they go to CSUN, like CSU yeah. Northridge, yeah. which is like right right over there, um, very close to here. And like they don't have, and they're both like very in the music industry, and they like don't have friends in college. Like all their mm -hmm. friends like are like people that like you know we're all just mutually friends with the music industry or whatever, just our group people or whatever. But like it's so interesting because it's like you can go to a city and like totally seclude yourself in that college life and yeah. just experience nothing else none of it yeah but it's really interesting like especially as like people who are trying to work in music that you get you guys kind of made that conscious decision that you're like i want to tap into that local scene like was that kind of like a 
a conversation? Like, what made I, you realize I, I, that? I want to say, like, it was it's definitely, I, I remember Bruce telling us, like, very, like, our creative director, Bruce, uh, who's been with us for a long time, he, uh, like, I remember a conversation with him where he's like, look, like, what y'all are doing, like, it's going to do what it does for four years, and then it's going to leave. And if y'all want to have a lasting impact on this place and, and a place that y'all can come back to, y'all need to really, you feel me, get into this full throttle. Yeah. So that's what we did, you know? And it's just putting your best foot forward as far as kind of taking in what... We, we just put a lot of time into meeting as many people as we could. And there were so, and there's so many artists that I listened to today. And it was regardless of whether they were there for school or they were local in the city, for some reason there was a bit of a, there was a kind of a renaissance time when we were there. Yeah. That was really wonderful. And there were so many amazing, amazing mu- like musicians and performers mm-hmm. that I met during those four years that are all over the country now. Yeah. But that all still feel that New Orleans is, is kind of a, a refuge. Yeah. It's kind of a mecca that we can always retreat to. And I think that's a really beautiful yeah, thing. Like, I feel like all place. of us have like interest in like moving back there at some point or like yeah, you know. I could die. I could die happy. Of time back there. So all cool. else failed, I always say I could just go to New yeah. Orleans and just do. I wouldn't nothing. mind. <laughs> like I'm yeah. happy. Like I, I wouldn't even care. Like, yeah, so if all cool. this got nothing. fucked, I'd just open a bar in New Orleans. Yeah, and I would yeah. literally be so content. I'd be so yeah. sad. Damn, that's so beautiful, it's just bro. So, because because art is ever present in that city, mm. and maybe and it's interesting because maybe some of that does come from you know it's like the natural disasters. Yeah. There's a lot of pain and a lot of th- you know there's a lot of trials and tribulations yeah. that every citizen of that city has to go through. Yeah, and so the art is just so ever present, and it's even in just the way that people talk. And mm. people are so poetic in their language. Yeah. And that's these southern people across the board. Like For half sure. my family southern, they're all like that. But I think having having that kind of nature of, of the way that you speak to people, and the way you communicate, the way that you love, the way that you create, it's very artistic. Yeah. It's like the most artistic city I've ever been in. And that's I think everybody so... has that bone in their body. And it's super cool. It's the coolest place I've ever been. Dude, I want to go so bad now. Yeah, okay. so yeah, we're really cool. selling it. Right? Yeah, you guys are hey. selling it. Be there right now. I, I feel like we, you know, we have a second life there, and we, you know, we live vicariously like through our people who we got down there, and we, we try to throw events down there, and like, yeah. we went back to our college and did a little speech, and like you know, spoke with the music industry cool. class and shit, and like, we we are. What was very, that like? Like, what'd you talk about, bro? I mean, similar shit. Right, to this. right now, yeah. Yeah. it's a lot like, like this, but yeah, just all like. I think we'd all be there right now if we didn't feel like we had. I genuinely think we have a yeah, responsibility. We have a, yeah, we have a responsibility. We have like, like yeah. we have we a privilege to, you know, be from places like New York and LA, and we had also a privilege to be able to experience this, you know, th- these artistic movements in the South, in New Orleans, mm. with people like Wakai, like Josh, and all these guys and Quadri that we work with, and you know, being from where we're from, you know. I could, you know, like I said, I could be happy and content to just stay in New Orleans for the rest of my life. But, you know, in order to put these guys in a position that, you know, to put them in front of as many people as they they need to be, they need to go to other places like New York and L.A. to Mm. be able to, you know, exercise because there's no industry presence down in New Orleans. So do you think being in L.A. or New York is still like an integral part to making the dream work? For sure. It is. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, I I think I think I agree for the most part well, unless wait, you, sorry I, mean, I completely take back my answer I answered really hastily yeah. and they all said yeah, yeah, yeah so I kind of just did it too but I just no I don't think you need to live in I New think York but right. I think this is like it helps but I you think need there's to come out here for sure oh, for like, sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, it like this for what we're doing like what we're doing is what we're doing so that our artists could have the luxury of being where they want to be. Yes. Yeah. So it's like... Because Wakai's still in New Orleans, right? Yeah. yeah. Back, All of our artists are so, you know, gotcha. back home. Luke, Luke, who's a new artist we've been working with, he stays out here. He's from Chicago. But for the most part, it's like, yo, this is the battlefront. You know what I mean? Interesting, yeah. If we're going back to our analogy, this is the battle. Like, this is, you feel me, where the shit is going down. So, like, we're here reporting for duty. And we're yeah. going to give you guys your updates, you know what I mean? But, like, yeah, I mean, I think artists are completely, like, the industry is changing. And, like, there yeah. like, there are ways you can completely run this mm. shit not being in L.A. or New York. Yeah. But for Orleans. what we're doing, yeah. we need to be the <laughs> troops on the ground here. Yeah. You know? yeah, I think you you have to speak incredibly, or you have to be incredibly intentional about the reason you're not there, though. Like, I think, like, if you're going to be somewhere, like, e- even if it's a major city, right? If you're going to be somewhere that's not New York or L.A., or, I don't know, realistically, maybe even just L.A., like, 
if you're going to be somewhere that's not LA, you have to be incredibly intentional about the way you move and the way in which you're like make, meeting the people you have to meet, you know? Yeah. yeah. In terms of success in what today's industry is. True. Yes. Yeah. As far as just being a, a self sustaining artist. True. You could be in Asheville, North Carolina. You could yeah. That. I mean, yeah. 100%, bro. I mean, there's artists who like have zero, like, probably like legitimate there fan are presence in New Orleans. Well, yeah, that don't, well, nobody knows. Yeah, well, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. there's an artist I refer to a lot um, who I've been a fan of for like literally like five years now. Named Cottonwood Firing Squad, and he's mm -hmm. this guy I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe he's from North Carolina. Is the most internet cryptic figure like ever. Uh -huh. Doesn't never play shows, never does anything. Has like eight thousand Instagram followers, but streams like a million plus. Like because like he just gets like random editorial support, and I mean not that that means like a ton anymore, but like. Mm -hmm. He just has like he algorithmically on Spotify. He just has like tapped into this very very specific like yeah for um like I don't know whatever it's just Spotify algorithm shit. But like he has such a crazy listener base, and like I think a lot of it is from like user based playlists as well. But it's like there are artists that exist on like a different plane, yeah. bro. Like there are artists that exist like totally. literally just on the internet, and and it depends on what your end goal is. Yeah, you know what I mean for like, sure. Like there are plenty of people who are content with A or B or C. You know, and it's like we're here to serve our artists, so it's like that's that's where I feel like we're here yeah. to just be versatile. Like any of us would catch a mm. flight tomorrow if we needed to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like it's getting to a point though where I feel like we could probably be anywhere. Mm. Like yeah. the amount of zooming and phone calls that you know zooming. is becoming a regular basis. It's like do I really need to be here? Like yeah. how many times am you I really going Chico? to get a coffee here? Was that or, like, earlier I, today? I talked to over. Yeah, earlier today <laughs> is one thing. You ever heard of Panchico? The band, right? Yeah. They're out of like some of the Midwest, I think right? I, th I thought they were UK. The only reason I bring them up is because I was thinking about. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is serious. I'm sorry. Get out. Wait, wait, wait. They're, they're, they're like. Says UK. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna erupt. <laughs> uh, what'd you say? <laughs> wait, he just references UK that shit. Like, oh. No, I don't. I don't even know if they're from the UK. They might not be. They're like Yola Tango <laughs> Jason, right? No, no. I, they're on you. Now, now. now I don't even fucking know if their name's <laughs> Panchico anymore. That. No, the the reason, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, but I found an album and I read their Spotify biography and it was this whole thing about how some dude in some record store in some like Midlands, uh -huh. UK city, I think, found this scratched up tape. <laughs> you guys love that. I know they love it. And they, they cool. brought it. They brought it home and they played it and it was this undiscovered. It was just this like weird undiscovered record and then they shared it onto like Reddit or something like that and yeah. developed this like cold following and then all of a sudden this random album that these dudes had dropped like 20 years ago has millions of streams on Spotify and they have millions of monthly listeners. Same thing I was saying earlier about the TikTok. <laughs> that's like the uh, bro. That, that's like that Alex Same Olsen shit. Saying, <laughs> these I'm guys gonna are, lose it right now. These guys <laughs> are deep in it. Okay, I gotta shake. I gotta shake back. Let's that's like that it. Alex Olsen song that blew up. <laughs> Drift. <laughs> Or Kate Bush. Oh yeah. Well, that's Kate Bush that too. was Stranger Things. Well, yeah, Stranger, Stranger, Stranger Things did the lead work. Like, yeah, yeah but one. yeah, Crazy, but I don't know. Yeah, I see your point though. Like, there are artists that have absolutely zero live presence. And it's kind of like the fans versus followers thing we we're talking about, right? There you go. It's like there are also artists on the flip side of that that have like a hundred thousand monthlies, but like are selling out five hundred cap venues. And then there's artists that have a hundred thousand monthlies that can't do bars. You know, yeah, that's right. what like was talking about it's like yeah. the difference between building fans versus followers, and it's Absolutely. such a discreet, discreet, discreet difference. It's interesting. Like, I think a lot of the digital teams, a lot of the majors, are uh, really good at building followers, but not really good about basing about building fans because building yeah. fans takes time and character and community building. Whereas at a certain point, building followers can just be algorithmic. You know, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's easy. Yeah. It's also, you can build a follower by getting one person to press one button once. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So different from being yeah. a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Getting one person one time to press one button once. Even mm -hmm. one listen is a little bit more love. You spend thirty. Yeah. True. Thirty it's minutes. Always, yeah. All these random <laughs> fucking metrics sound. It's like you gotta. It's like take a step back. It's like what's the goal here? Like, yeah. What, like, like. You is it vanity numbers? Make music yeah. and you're trying to. Are you, you trying know, to get paid? Or are you trying to get followers? You know, you're trying to make <laughs> yeah. money off of music at the end of the day because everyone has to make money and yeah. music's your passion. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, what do you got to do here to really make it happen? What matters? Like yeah. these fans that'll you know grow with you for your entire life, or someone that might unfollow you in a few months. I wish I knew the name of the book. I I, I I'm. I feel like I've referenced it before, but it's escaping my mind. There's a book, uh, or I think I think it's literally just called "The Concept of a Thousand True Fans." Yeah, I, yeah, right. fans yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about, uh, I was one. 
Ah, <laughs> I read. Got me. Here, here. Got me. I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna reference that earlier when I was talking. Yeah, that's the whole shebang. If yeah, you yeah. get a thousand people to fucking, you know, buy a ticket, buy a shout out t-shirt. Billy. Yeah, there you go. Shout out Billy O'Connell. And I mean, like, that's a very specific like level of buy-in, though, right? I mean, like, a fan there is like that level of fan is someone that's like. They're seeing you every time you're in their city. They're yeah. buying your merch. You know, like you, you drop a vinyl, they're buying it. Whatever, like that's a very, very dedicated and developed level of fan. But it's like if you can get a thousand of those, you're good for the rest of your life. And it's it's interesting because a thousand. It, I think the most interesting thing about that is that like, I the way that you do that could literally just be a thousand individualized conversations. Yeah, yeah. You know, straight up. That's like, like, yeah. like that's it's like so interesting. You know, you could stay after your show at some random tour stop and talk to some kid. If you talk to that kid for 25 minutes, there's a chance that he will be a fan for life. And yeah. like, and it's interesting, right? Because like one fan, like if we're defining fan and how I was just talking about it, mm-hmm. one fan for life is worth more than a hundred thousand followers, like monetarily, 100%. which is insane right. to think about, you yeah. know? It's nuts. That's no, I completely crazy. agree. You're right? Yeah. It really like is monetarily, crazy. like it is. Yeah. A hundred thousand followers, like net will make you zero, yeah. zero dollars theoretically. Yeah. Whereas like, a fan that is seeing you, let's say you tour once a year for three consecutive years, you sell a $25 ticket, you just made $40 off them, they're buying your merch every time, you make another $40 off them, whatever, let's say you make like $200 off somebody collectively over the course of three years, that is like probably 10 times more than you can make off 100,000 followers. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of like, there, there's a, a dual side to it though, where uh-huh. it's like, you know, how do you re- how do you record that metric? And mm. because you can't there's, really. there's definitely monetary, I don't know, the mon- monetary monetarical opportunity or mon- <laughs> I don't like, know what to say. I guess like there's like financial, fiscal, there's fiscal, there's fiscal, there's fiscal there's financial opportunity <laughs> that opportunity is right? not presentable towards you. <laughs> Unless you have a certain following, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so like, it's like it, you yeah. might get, like, you might not get paid as much for a show because you have not that many followers on Instagram, yeah. or, or a brand hundred, might not do a deal with you because you don't have 10k you know followers. What I'm saying? On yeah, Instagram. so true. You having one person that's willing to pay five dollars for your album every time it drops, comparatively to a hundred thousand people that won't send you a dime but this brand over here is going to pay you 50 grand yeah. in one campaign it's also hard to make a fan like even oh it's me, the hardest thing in the world like i love music i consume it every single day but just me i'm the kind of person where i think i, I like like three to five songs by every any artist you could probably yeah. give me and it's hard to get me to really lock in on one like i haven't mm-hmm. bought a t-shirt in a while like i it's, it's yeah it's and that's and that's Narrative. <laughs> it's, an, no, it, it's hard to get to that level. It's hard it to get is. to a level where you can really make like I. It's it's w- when you get excited. Oh, so and so's dropping an album. Let's fucking. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like I, I'm really excited to hear this person. I'm a part of their journey. Yeah. I'm really. I want to buy into this. Dude, yeah. I think that because I listen. I feel like when I listen to music, I listen to one song by one artist and then uh-huh. switch to a different genre, a different yeah. song. And yeah, yeah. It's all a change. It's a big shuffle. Man. It's all changed. People didn't used to care about you know numbers, and people used to just be excited that you know, yeah people used to drop on the same day. People yeah. used to drop like insane caliber albums on the same day, yeah. and yeah. it was like exciting. Lauren Hill, Outkast, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shit like that. And yeah. now it's like okay, let's all like take a look at the numbers. Yeah, who's who's on the Billboard? Who's going crazy? Like you know, that's what matters to people. It's yeah. Like, Dude, just get excited about what the Because there's a difference between people. numbers and impact. You know oh, I mean? 100%. Yeah. Like, there are people who control, like, culture and control the conversations that are going on. Yeah. And they don't necessarily control the streaming numbers. And, like, I feel like with all the artists we represent, like, we are leaning, you know, away from the numbers, skewed. Like, let's just take this to the authentic and let's let's make this as real as it can be here. And like, let's just get like a straight conversion ratio. Like, all right, yeah. bam. We know if we send out an email blast, shit, at least 50 people are, yeah. 50% of the people are gonna be, you know, engaging with that. At least reading and, it, And yeah. doing some crazy shit as opposed to like, just some stupid shit. Like, yeah, it, it, and, and that, and, <laughs> and that goes to another thing that I was, I was gonna say earlier, which is, is like, the power of, high level engagement versus low level engagement. Mm. 
And I think we're the type of people and the type of company and the artists that we represent. This fool is joking at. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to do anything. I'm sorry. So, that was my but, fault. You get, but, you get a shot. Let me, that. If you laugh yeah. during this, you're taking you're a shot. You're punished right now, bro. <laughs> so it's like this. It's like this. He said, give me the Espelon. <laughs> High caliber versus low caliber. We're trying to get the high caliber engagement because not only does that help us with the algorithm, does that help us, you feel me, with reten- retention rates, all yeah. these different things. But it's also like what we stand for is like someone who's really truly invested and not someone who's here for the temporary. I mean, w- by like high level engagement, you mean somebody who's gonna like click link in your bio, go to your you know go to your website. At least look at your merch. They're gonna stream your share. They're gonna add you to a couple places. Yeah, like et cetera, there's, a, et cetera. There's, a, there's a ton of metrics you can measure by. It's like yeah, it goes from the type of ads we're running on YouTube or Google to the type of you feel me, uh, marketing campaigns that we run with press or whatever. You know, like, yeah. It's basically like just a grand model of we're going for higher retention over higher views. Yeah. Because the more targeted you get, the higher retention that feeds you to an algorithm that's gonna fuck with you more. How do you think you fuel that high level engagement? I, I certainly have an opinion on it, but I'm curious to hear yours. Like, what do you think is the key to like, kind of I mean, getting that higher level engagement versus the lower level engagement? It ri- Sorry, you can, you can I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a spit on like a, 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 a technical and then you could spit Go on. Go crazy, yeah. that's insane. I'm fired up. <laughs> I just took like a, a shot of tequila. Fired up. <laughs> I'm fired up. <laughs> He's fired up right now, let's I'm get gone. it. So like, on a technical basis, Game up. The high level engagement is people who are gonna like, all right, let's say it's like this. You're on Spotify. If I if I show my song to 100 people and two of those people save the song, the Spotify algorithm is gonna fuck my shit up. Yeah. If I, sh- if I show- a It's like a really low conversion rate. Yeah, you're saying, low yeah. conversion rate. So like the conversion rate is what drives the algorithm. Yeah. So like, if we're running a marquee ad or a Google ad, the purpose of that ad or the purpose of what we're doing is not to get a net result with the ad. Yeah. The purpose is to change a metric that will target the algorithm. Mm. So it's like find the highest level of engagement that you possibly can and like figure what out- what we're like, doing is we're feeding, uh, we're feeding data to the algorithm gotcha. instead of trying to just gain the bare metrics off of what's going on with this ad. You feel me? Like yeah. I could get a hundred people to convert at the highest ratio pos- possible, excuse me. And like that will fuel the algorithm to then go three times that. And I'm not even yeah. paying for that mm. versus I'm paying the algorithm to get me two times that, but I'm, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm paying for that. So it's like, that's that's what I'm speaking on. My nah, thoughts on the algorithm? Ideally. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Ideally, the answer to your original question is just good music. Oh, 100%, yeah. Like, well, I think it begins and ends with good music, and then there are no more questions to ask if the music is yeah, good, right? Yeah, and that would yeah. be what yeah, we yeah. would all hope. Mm-hmm. For sure. And it's like we were talking about earlier where you could, you know, if, if you can really shred, if you can really play, and you sit there and, and you prop your iPhone up in your bedroom and you play a song and you pluck it on a guitar and you sing a song and it's incredible, that'll probably go. Yeah, you're good, Because it yeah. just should. And that's what, the, and, and you'd like to think that that would be all that it was. But the other, the flip side of it is just shit that nobody's ever seen before or thought yeah, about. Yeah. And that goes back to like the Shep Gordon. Just, everybody just gets caught up in all the bullshit. It's like, I agree, you, yeah. you can make good music, you don't gotta come up with all these crazy ideas. I can straight up. Entirely like, agree. Show your yeah. music, yeah. Like, show yourself playing your instrument or fucking present your song, present a cool video yeah. that you made. It's so real. And it just, but, but there's still <laughs> yeah. ways to like, do it in a cool way. Like I think about the Shep Gordon, Alice Cooper thing all the time. The the There's a legendary manager named mm-hmm. Shep Gordon, documentary, um, Super Mensch. Okay, okay. This is a, this is a, this is a classic yeah, tale. Yeah, I have heard it. All right, let's go. Super match documentary. Chef uh-huh. Gordon, a legendary manager, one of the best in the game, the Michael Jordan of, of, of entertainment managers. That's the coolest phrase I've ever heard. Yeah, he's an incredible, and he managed <laughs> everybody. Go entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> he managed everybody from you know Teddy Pendergrass yeah. to Wolfgang Puck to like Olympic athletes. The Michael to Jordan Alice of entertainment Cooper, is so hard. Everybody. Yeah. And Alice Cooper, at the time, had a very big fan base in, in America, but not in the UK. And to just sell out a very big arena show in yeah. the UK and didn't have a way to do it. 
and it was a couple days away from the show, and ticket sales were real low, and they didn't know what to do. And Shep Gordon basically just took a double-decker bus and plastered it with photos of, like, a butt-naked Alice Cooper with, like, a snake wrapped around his dick. What? And then put it in the middle of Piccadilly Circus, parked it, stopped traffic two days later, so Cops sold swarming. out show. Because so the loud. kids hate it, parents love it. It's punk. It's rock. It's rock punk and roll, and it's prime. It's punk rock, oh, baby. It's punk rock, uh-huh. and it's just a photo. You know, it's just a photo of him with a snake around his dick, and he's just and, and it's stop traffic in the middle of the hottest part of the city, and it fucked shit up. Yeah, and 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 that isn't applicable now. Yeah, I wouldn't just like put Cisco on the bus. <laughs> 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 but. I think there are still ways that you can think outside the box and, and, and come up with, with ways that are genuinely yeah. interesting and kind of innovative to promote your yeah. music while still being great. Because Alice Cooper's still a great musician. We all know that. Of course, and yeah. And if he could prop up an iPhone in his bedroom and film himself shredding his room, yeah. well, it's, maybe it's, it's, kinda, it's, it's interesting that it's like, nowadays, if you want to be controversial, yeah. you're probably going to have to do it in a social media fashion, potentially, mm. right? Like, let's do something that's going to... So get a million people to comment, yeah. right? But that's going to then affect this guy's artistry. 100%. Now, yeah. A label or a manager or whatever, you marketing guy, you know, parking this bus in the middle of whatever, it's not going to directly affiliate, like, yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, it it'll obviously make people be like, yeah. hey, this guy's punky, whatever, but it's not going to be like, that was the artist's call. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. If some, but if there's an artist like posting on their social media doing some shit directly, it's going to be like, why it comes yeah. off as corny now. If I see yeah. Blink-182 like wheat pasting on exactly. like Hollywood Boulevard, I'm not thinking like, oh, Tom DeLonge did that wheat no, pasting. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's, it's so it's there's precise. kind of like a weird, you know, yeah. a weird uh, fine line there with, 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 with just where we're at with social media where it's like that's kind of where you have to take your risks nowadays yeah. in order to reach new people. Because if you just kind of fit a cookie cutter mold of like, yeah, you gotta post one song talking about the lyrics and one song about how you have the inspiration for the song. It's yeah. like everyone's gonna be like, fuck this shit. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, some people give a fuck, but yeah. not everybody. But if you wanna go like reach a million people, yeah. you gotta do some shit that's, you know, against the grain or, you know, a little bit off putting, whatever. Take or a rest. Make- Awesome. Awesome music, music. yeah. Music. I mean, yeah. it, it's interesting too, right? Because like, I, I, I do believe that like, being a musician is one of the easiest front-facing brands to have. I think it's way easier for like a, a really dope, you know, band, a really dope rapper or whatever, is a really dope musician to go viral. It's, that's way easier than like off rip to go viral or like above the bridge to go viral, yeah. right? It's like, it's a way easier buy-in because we're so used to listening to music. It's mm. just such an ingrained part of pop culture that like, it's not a very big ask, big ask generally, I think. Yeah. But with no, that being said, it, yeah. but that being said though, like, I think that ends and begins with good music. So it's like, I don't know, like, 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 it's in, it's interesting to think about right like 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 I saw this, this TikTok that Danny Raquel made. God bless Danny Raquel's heart, uh, idiot. Uh, but he he made this TikTok talking of Mario. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Shot for Mario. Mario's here. <laughs> anyway, he made this TikTok where he was pretty much just saying like, if you're not going on viral, if you're not going viral on TikTok, your music isn't good enough. And I thought that was the silliest thing I've ever heard because they're like, there's one part of it where it's like. If there has to be a base level like understanding of what you're trying to say, right? Like yeah. you can be like the most incredible songwriter in the world. If you can't shoot a video that's like half decent, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Like I go back to the point we said earlier yeah. where it was you know, you got ten thousand hours to be a good artist, ten thousand hours to be a good manager. For sure, yeah. You have you're asking the artist to put 10,000 hours to be a good content creator. Which is probably my biggest pet peeve in the entire music industry. And I think it's like the biggest fundamental misunderstanding amongst like labels and managers and teams everywhere is that the idea that like, you're asking your artist to be a master filmmaker is beyond me. Yeah, bro. I've, like, I've, that, that, that I've never understood. Good. It's insane, right? Whereas like, insane. we have TikTok and you can scroll nine times and find a filmmaker that's like, insane, right? Yeah, but like, shout out like, People like live to create. I like them. Shout out. And the way that they're shifting the model. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's like, dude, we talk about that every single day. Yeah. Like that idea that like, just like it, just how frustrating it is that like, we know so many managers that like are like desperately trying, like begging their artists to make TikToks that have no chance of doing anything because they're just not well shot 
or well colored or like really made in- engagingly or even like intentionally at all, right? We have never once begged our artists. God bless you. To guys. like yeah. make a TikTok. Yeah. That's awesome. Like yeah. on my mother. Yeah. Never. It's like that's just so silly. It's like yeah. dude. They're oh. they're musicians. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just not what this shit is about. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it's if you can't see that, then you're just not you're not yeah. meant for this shit. It's like yeah. people, I just don't think any of my like idols would have ever done that either. At all, yeah. dude, not like, a single musician I can think of that I love. Any like fucking legendary act TikTok. that we yeah. look up to and you know call a legend would never be like forced or fucking bent on the arm to fucking yeah. make a TikTok. Like yeah. you'd be fired on the spot. <laughs> trying to do some stupid shit like that, like trying to force yeah. fucking Prince to make yeah, yeah. TikTok. So it's like, I want my artists Prince to be legends. Would, like, they shoot are you legends. Point blank. <laughs> point yeah. blank. Would shoot you in the face. Point blank. As, what do you guys? You ask them to make TikTok. Yeah. This is an interesting question. Where do you guys think the role of content like plays in on a team level for musicians? Then, because like I certainly feel like I often feel like the filmmaker. I, 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 I feel like this in 95% of cases that the filmmaker is an integral part of every artist team. Agreed. Absolutely massive. And it's only getting bigger. And it Agreed. will only continue to get bigger. Yeah. How important do you guys see that role? And, like, do you think it's the most important? Or do you I think it's a more important role? Like, what do you think are the biggest parts about building a team around it? I so, think documentation is crucial, but go, go yeah. ahead. Nick. I was going to say real quick, just a quick answer. Uh-huh. I feel like the equivalent is, like, getting an executive producer to produce mm, your album. Totally is the equivalent of getting like an executive person to capture the visual element 100 percent. i'm gonna leave it at that yeah. build your visual world yeah yeah i Going totally agree line, it's just like make the art that is meant to be for this music yeah you know we've had visual elements intertwined with music f- for a very long time now it's not something that you skip anymore no that's just bottom line you can't right so but that doesn't mean you have to make content yeah. for these short form platforms. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But do what feels natural mm-hmm. and then, you know, convert things to fit where we're at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, take your amazing, thought out, narrative dri- driven music videos and, and storylines you're creating and then cut them down in, into stuff that's digestible for, for people now and drive them to where, where you want them to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's very important. Yeah. It's very important to to put it out. You can't neglect it, mm-hmm. but you don't have to, like, force it. By yeah. Means. Do what feels right and totally. convert to to digestible platforms. Yeah. You know? I agree with you. And, and I think what's interesting, too, is, like, one good video a week can often be worth a million times more than like Straight a bunch up. of average videos every single day. Yeah. yeah. Like you could put out 14 videos a week, right? Two a day. Let's put, let's just say that. One every four days that is like really good and really intentionally thought out and like really adds an incredible amount of substance to the world that you're creating as an artist is probably worth infinitely more. Mm, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um. Okay, so oh, go ahead. Can we make a... F- uh, I need to use the restroom so bad. Yeah. Can we make a funny edit where Nye goes to the bathroom or something like that? I've even smoked half a cigarette and then left the rest for later. I swear to God, like something about the nicotine (laughs) marriage dates, bro. I swear, I swear, dude. I'm six months deep, no. So am I. No cigarettes. Six bro. months now, yeah. Congrats, I'm like, we're on the same exact yeah, plan. Dude. I was like, double J in rotation. Yeah. I was the dick. Drunk right now, guys. You got- Mix Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ice, <laughs> <y'all>? <laughs> Hey, Mario. Hey, Going back into the podcast, are we on? Are we live? <laughs> we'll, we'll, are we live right now? We'll go back just because I, I, I just want to talk about how crazy it is that you worked at Whole Foods with my roommate. I did, and like that was how I knew we you. We have more. We have more. Like, Bro, okay. <laughs> 
But me and can I kill this? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Destroy it. <laughs> me and Lance Redeker, the talented, the great, worked at Whole Foods, <laughs> and we stole a lot of your mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked in the cheese department, so I was cutting a lot of cheese. Pause. Is that a pause? Not really. It's, oh, like, that's it's fine. not really sexual or anything. No. It's just kind of stinky. But I was doing that, working the wine, working the, the side beer. Side B of the podcast <laughs> opened up right now. Lance was working side like just random grocery B. shit. And, bro, we would just be, I'm sorry, Bezos, catching licks on y'all. <laughs> Fucking stealing yerbas. I was tossing him like hella fucking person. cheese and beer and shit. That's just the craziest. Like, like, like the it fact. Like that is such a small world. The fact that you worked at Whole Foods with my roommate is so crazy. It was crazy. It was like I saw him and he was like, you know. It's kind of all dripped out in some like vomit colored fucking fit. Here's my vintage Fruit of the Loom white tee. Is, like just like vomit green, drippy <laughs> pants, like every employee at Whole Foods is. And fucking, I was like, yo, this guy's on some shit. So I pulled up on bro and I'm like, sup, you make music, bitch? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, dude, what's your Instagram? And then I peeped, he was like, just knew a bunch of people I knew followed him already and a bunch of shit and I was like shit man like we're already in the same sphere and then we were just locked in we threw a show yeah where he performed at I was there was you were there yeah it was fucking great show time. he came to Lance's birthday party he came to Lance's like, birthday party you were here that was the I was first here on Lance's birthday here. first time we ever seen you guys were here yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm surprised I didn't meet you that night it was night. a cameo it was slight it was brief it was, yeah, brief. It was brief. Yeah, yeah, brief we were like just kind of absorbing a vibe catching some heads on the roof like damn what did you think of the crib For, what, what was your first reaction to the crib uh, it was valley 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 yeah. type shit yeah it was pretty it was yeah pretty but in a good way like signature it was like I felt like I was in a movie like this was a depiction of yeah, it kids definitely, in the valley. Yeah, it felt like... And we skate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kids in the valley and we skate. I think like... A, new, like, a, new, a contemporary yeah. version. Contemporary. I don't want to take away from the, the, the beautiful speak that you guys are talking about your New Orleans house, but I do sort of feel similarly I catch that house. vibe. I know. Yeah. I catch that vibe yeah. for sure. I, uh, I don't know, man. I feel blessed to live in a house where like I feel like there's so much cool music and art people just coming through yeah. all the time it's so sick how many of there are you here? there's five of us and we all work in art yeah, uh there's like incredible. me i do above the bridge and i work for live too and then mario works for above the bridge and does makes incredible photos as well mario! Mario! Oh! come on now <laughs> there we go uh and then there's lance and then monet no lives with us and there's sick musician and then our to- our, uh, our roommate Tokyo, our Tokyo, our Tokyo, Tokyo, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo. Our roommate Tokyo does videography too, so it's like all creative oh, yeah. in this house. Mario, could you, could you reset this camera real quick right here? I, yeah. My bad, I forgot to press on when I restarted it. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, thank you, Mario. Thank you, Mario. Oh, but best. yeah, dude, I, uh, that was c- center stage. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Just um. Yeah, I just realized I forgot to press record. Thanks, bro. Sick. Yeah. Um. No, yeah, but it's it, it's. I don't know. I feel gracious about it because I think it's it's also like, I never had that like moving to LA and knowing nobody experience, and I think I take that for granted a lot because I feel like I've met a lot of people who had that like, I'm gonna move to LA to pursue music or whatever, but didn't come out here with like a really discreet plan yeah. or, or or even like a big group of people they knew. You know, mm-hmm. they just kind of moved out and had to like figure it out. It's hard. Yeah, and yeah. that was something I, I, I thankfully never had to go through. Yeah. But like, when Same you guys there. first moved out here, did you? How was it settling in? And how long have you been out here now? When did you graduate? Graduated in twenty one. Twenty one. We spent a year, me and I, in New York, fucking dishwashing in Italian restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Block away from each other. Sick. We both dishwashed at Italian restaurants, one block away from each other. Yeah. Different. And restaurants. I live the same life pretty much. Yeah, yeah. honestly, like, good. Whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> read about it. <laughs> Fucking Fuck Google it. It's in the dark. <laughs> it's, it's all in the dark. In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's another inside joke we got. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the dark. That's insane. That's nuts. All right. 
<laughs> what the no. fuck was I just said? Uh, <laughs> you guys live the same life in New York. We live the same. No, we were just watching. No, no, okay, okay, okay. You okay. To LA. okay. How did you oh act? God, it's all in we shambles now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Super luckily. Had Nick out here. I had my girlfriend Ruby out here. Had a great community of people. I got to move into a crib. That was a great situation. And I came out a little bit later, like a year later. I've and been here like a year. We and already kind of had some like, gotcha. yeah, a situation going on, a group of people. So, yeah. Luckily me, for us, it was super calm. But I know like mad people that were like yeah. living in cars out here when they first. I'm gonna just in. emphasize this Same real dude. quick. So it's like, you know, I'm from LA. Harlem. Came up here, <laughs> and like I said earlier on the, on the show, like bro, it is very hard here to to like grow something organically, and that's why I give mad respect to people who do. Because it, do you think that because it just gets drowned out? I think there's so much. I think it's because a lot of people who move here, not essentially people who are from here, yeah are very interested in just themselves. Interesting, yeah. And they're not like, bro, like, in order to make progress, like, you gotta unify. And, like, we unified, like, in a place where there's no music industry, basically. Yeah. You feel me? So, we came here as a united front, but, like, if we didn't have that, bro, like, it would've been tough. So, yeah. yeah. Nah. These fools came out here and, like, you know, I, I already knew people and, and Kip had people he knew and we all had people we knew. Yeah. Yeah. And um we were able to make a very smooth transition back here to LA. It's fun though because these guys are really my because it's the core, I, I think there was a lot of extra I'm gonna be okay because of these yeah. two. Yeah, like, I and, can't fail. And and, and yeah. like these guys are like the strength of five friends each. You know what I mean? Like with <laughs> yeah. these two, I have 10 friends. Yeah. That's just how it feels. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. times where like, they're both not available and I'm like, oh shit, like, I don't really <laughs> have My life is <laughs> over. <laughs> like, I don't really have like, another friend. Just, like, yeah, it's like, weird. Do nothing with, you know? yeah. It's like, you gotta make sure you have shit like that because it'll lose your mind out here if you don't yeah, have yeah, like bro. people that you just really like. Because I you still know, don't have with that. On, you know, like, you could just as easily yeah. become you could be my one of my next. closest yeah. friends. Yeah, I, I would love to. Let's do it, dude. Let's did fucking, we just start. become best friends? I think we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did we Let's just become best go. friends? No, I, I totally feel that though. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I often hear stories of people, people who move out here and don't really know their roommates and, and that idea is kind of terrifying oh, so to it's like college yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, big time. that's exactly really I didn't know but how did that it, it happen was, it was not bad because, well like I got hooked up cause like I live in this fucking like big ass house in yeah. the valley in Sherman Oaks and like my girlfriend before I even moved here but I was intending on moving here had gone to a party there and they were all like, oh, we got this room opening up, yada, yada. So she was like, oh, my boyfriend's trying to move in, whatever. So I just kind of moved in. But it was just a bunch of, like, random people I never met before. But we were all involved in music. So gotcha. I was like, okay, like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let me dive into a situation where I'm with a bunch of people who are living off of music in L.A. Like, that's what I'm trying to do. I can yeah. learn a lot of shit. So, you know, I just came in, you know, stuck to my own shit and was like, yeah, like, I'm not, like, here to, like, you know, be like these guys are all gonna be my best friends for life or like whatever i'm gonna like just live with these guys and be like okay let me let me do my thing while they do theirs so yeah it, it's doable as people like in the industry that are kind of because i was thinking about this because you just said like maybe i can learn from these people yeah as people who are like in the industry right but kind of doing a left of center thing where you guys are tr very consciously trying to curate a community right yeah do you feel like you take advice well like, do you feel like you hear things from people who are, like, in sort of involved in the old industry and, like, does it bounce off your back and you just don't think they understand what you're trying to do? Or do you feel like you absorb it well? Like, do you take advice well, you think? I think we take it very seriously. Uh-huh. Yeah, personally. I, I think so. I think that there's always a level of, like, even the textbooks that we were reading in our music industry degrees that ended only a few years ago. Yeah. We graduated in 21. It wasn't that long ago. And we all graduated with a degree in music industry studies. But even some of those books were teaching us about slightly outdated yeah. things. I dropped out of that major. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's like this shit changes at a rapid pace. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean like think, the experiences that any of these, because like at the end of the day, the experiences that I'm having with these guys, like, 
I don't expect them to not have value in for 10 sure. plus years. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. still the core of it is always the there. The core is always there. Yeah. And, you know, that will always come through with what we've been talking about this whole time. Just like the importance of, you know, trust, family, and emotion with music making and, and the yeah. business behind music. Like, that's yeah. never going to go away. So. It's just like the little things of like, and that's the thing oh, about you know, people Spotify too. Whatever. Yeah, it, it's still a people business, yeah. and I think that you Always. know, in the same way that artists, like for example, like it's award season right now. We just had the Grammys and the Oscars, and I spent a lot of time thinking about how I don't, I don't really care about, you know, I don't think anybody, nobody, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard to really care and know what what's happening. And it's like, <laughs> it's a, is it a popularity contest? Is it not? But one thing that I do that I can say, you know, regardless of the awards, my favorite thing about that is being able to witness the reverence with which artists that I respect look at each other. Interesting. Seeing, wow. an, seeing one actor from one movie look at another actor from another movie, two people I really love, seeing one of them accepting a speech and giving a speech and the other one in the crowd being like, that's, that's my, my guy. fucking guy. Like, yeah. I love being able to see that. And I think that in the industry, it's important to keep that as well amongst business people yeah. in addition to artists. And I think that that's, the, that's why I take advice. Because I think yeah. that somebody's saying something to me and being able to have that kinship and being able to know someone who's a manager and know someone who's a booking agent and be like, oh, that motherfucker, they know their fucking stuff. Like, yeah. that's a good guy. That's a good person. That's a good... Yeah. Like, I, they, they told me something that I really, really valued. I love that. And I think that being able right. to have that reverence yeah. for and each other like, as just, artists... Just like, even important. though they may be outdated to us, like... They were at a time where the people that they was giving them advice Interesting. was out there. Yeah. And they made it work yeah. for yeah, yeah. what time they were in. So it's they like, know what it takes to move with what's changing. Yeah, for sure. It's on us to be able to take the information that they're giving us, sift through it, and if need be, interpret it to modern times. Yeah, gotcha. That's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. But like, it really just comes down to being able to vet the information that's coming to you because it's like bro i would take advice from person a but i would not take advice from person b yeah I get you it. know what i'm saying so like being able to have that type of judgment you know i don't know the fuck person b <laughs> <laughs> i think it is really important to like a like approach those situations like a lack of ego yeah. though and like be willing yeah. to like be that open book, you know? yeah. and it's the reverse street too because like for a sure. lot of these older guys they need us because we understand, understand what's cool current time and yeah they fucking need to still be relevant so yeah yeah, yeah. But know. they also still think we're kids because we are yeah so it's that weird thing where they have to learn to kind of trust us yeah and see that we have boots on the ground. Yeah, the smart ones. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, like, like the most of the industry people that I know that are like are in their 30s or 40s that I really look up to and I think really have a, a good understanding of like the culture now, they surround themselves with a lot of younger people. Yeah, it's like yeah. all the CEOs will be like yeah. retired youngins who are yeah. running shit and now they're just gonna hire a bunch of young people to Like now sick, work the really tapped game. in interns, yeah. <laughs> Shot. Yeah. <laughs> like brain transfer fill in some blanks for me so you, you start the LLC it's an events company in the beginning correct yes when do you do then transition to management like what is the process from getting to events company forward not well Kai well, gotcha Kai was COVID <laughs> Different answers across COVID the board. COVID ripped uh, it was it was me we, me and Kim were still living in New York he might have just moved well Kai was a good friend of ours who would continue to make great music even after leaving Loyola. He was just in Louisiana and you met him at the local he, scene? He went to the Bay for a while and then he kind of came back. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. He I talked out. about that in my interview with him yeah, and I was like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? He dropped yeah. out and moved yeah. to the Bay for a long time. He's living with this dude Jimmy, who's a great producer, and then he moved back to New Orleans and then he had family who were living in Texas and Corpus Christi and, and, and there was a lot of different moving parts for him, but he, we reconnected and then post-grad, he was like, hey, I, I met this guy named Levi. God bless Sar, one of our good confidants, who lives in Delaware and had never met Wakai before in the flesh, but was a big fan and a good dude and someone who was interested in the industry and had made a few plays of his own. And he's like, I, this guy wants to manage me and I think I'm taking some strides and I want some additional help. I don't know if I want my manager to be someone I've never met. Do you want to co-manage him with me? Because I know you and you kind of have the, you have the jargon down and you're a good person and you sort of are here you've been a part of the atmosphere, a part of the world and part of the culture, you know me. He you chose know. well. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he did, and, and, and then I was like, yeah, I'll do it if, if, we, if I can do it with these guys. And then we all did it together. And then it became very quickly just a thing that was like the three of us became a management company that was 
fall for Wakai at the beginning, and then that just went so much better than we could have ever expected it to go. And that yeah. first like release and to a dark boy, that album and what that did was monumental. And it, it was like true, and it's still something I listen to every day. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's so good. I think it's so awesome when like not only managers, but even A and R's or even like filmmakers or agents or whatever people in the industry like it's so refreshing and cool and they are still to the day that they stop working or even to the, to the, to the day, day, day that they die like are genuine fans of the artists they work with Absolutely. that's the coolest shit ever it's Her, so refreshing yeah. man because like i feel like that fandom can fade at a certain point when they become human yeah you know and they become your friend well that was the scariest part about interning yeah. a label for the first time where'd you intern uh uh, cinematic uh -huh. with Johnny Shives and I loved my experience there for a lot of reasons but one thing that was weird was and not even just because of this label but just because of the people that introduced me to meeting people in the industry it was weird to meet people that were like oh yeah I don't really listen to anybody on our on our label like you'd meet people that so weren't weird. worked for a label and they'd be like yeah I don't really listen to anybody on our roster and I was like that's so it was so a weird it was such so an removed. abstract thing to try and understand <laughs> yeah um yeah like Not i think we all come from the perspective of like we're like curating a roster of artists that is like our ideal jam session show beautiful like, yeah and like we you know we use our personal taste to describe you know discretion a lot of that you know but i think also we use our best judgment in terms of what everyone's going for because I think everyone who we work with is standing for the same type of shit well, that we are you know it's deeper than just the music it's the person it's the show is deeper yeah. than the music 100% so where do you guys go after Wakai uh, after Wakai so you meet Wakua, you meet Wakua, why can I say the word Wakai right now? <laughs> Jesus Christ Wakai. yeah so, so you meet Wakai and then you Wakai, go and then the next one was Quadri gotcha. who I met um, also from Louisiana right also from Baton Rouge yeah Baton Rouge Baker Quads from Baker gotcha similar circuit and uh, I was in New York with Okai. He was staying in my house. We went over to Annabelle Klein's apartment uh -huh. and with Red Veil and Red Veil's management. I'm like the biggest Red Veil fan in the world. Kai. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was good to meet him. It was, it was, that was the first time I'd ever met him. Yeah. And it was me, Veil, Kai, Annabelle in her apartment. And then Quad just was in town. I like, came through. Uh -huh. He just sort of told me about what he was working with and what his last release it looked like and that he was looking for help and he didn't have a, ma a manager anymore and so i was like well fuck it we've done all this incredible stuff with wakai do you want to come on board and and join that with us and and he was enthusiastic about it and that worked and then yeah so many things happened in between but cisco came right before i moved here just before 2023 and uh and then luke titus came a couple months ago so so luke's on your roster too luke had just joined that's really cool. Uh, the, you guys exist in like so many different worlds now. I feel like because yeah. there's like the jazz side and then yeah. there's the rap side. Did you grow up in both those kinds of music or like how is your kind of introduction into the jazz side of things more so? I mean, I feel they like you go hand in hand. I guess I think they yeah. do go yeah. hand in hand. For sure. I think for us, it's like you know we've always leaned towards jazz influenced hip hop. Yeah, gotcha. And I think we were never really. Huge, like I mean, I fuck with jazz. I love jazz. Yeah, and I'm sure all of our parents put us on a jazz at a very early age. But I think we're all hip hop heads at the start, and what we're building is more of a fusion between the two. Cool. And this is it's what it truly is if you boil down the art form, you know. So. Yeah, and I think it's also a lot of. Um, I feel like we're very much for the youth and for like what is now and. Mm kind of what that was for us growing up was hip hop. And, you know, to be able to, I'd say we're an expert when it comes to, you know, managing an artist that is for the youth. Gosh, you know wow. And to be able to enter the jazz atmosphere with young jazz musicians who are extremely talented and with a, a youth and a community of young guys and, and, and girls and kids who are, kind of like in my opinion ready for real music to kind of take yeah. full swing again we're able to offer something that's like a rapper mindset on a while and an approach and a, or like a, just like a, a like a for the youth approach 
for jazz artists. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. is like any jazz artist in the past is gonna get worked up the pipeline of like a hundred years down the line. Yeah. Of like you know, so traditional, it may be. so traditional yeah, it's legacy. But we're like, I... no, like let's put this in front of like the kids and like the 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 people of like the future who are yeah. like gonna grow with this stuff and. And that's been like really cool and like successful and I think that's like a what void a cool that we're about feeling, it. you know, yeah. like that like a lot of people don't have and to be able to push Dude, out yeah. and help with people's visions like Cisco and Luke is is dope as fuck. Yeah. It's like you know, it'd be easy as fuck for them to just be like jazz artists and like yeah. play venues where everyone's sitting down and, you know, whatever and Yeah. Like, Which is still a, great when it's it, dope when as fuck, it, when yeah. That, yeah is called for yeah for yeah. sure and they can do both but like there's no reason why they shouldn't music be, needs you know, shit right now in front of the yeah. same people that Redville is in front of yeah. or whoever and it's like like they're in that same vein it's all coming from the same influence 100%. and, the, and yeah. the same you know history so yeah. you know it, it's vital to us to like you know work at that angle because I also feel I was snubbed of a jazz education as a young kid interesting yeah because I, I I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, and I think that jazz, and and this isn't the case. There are some young kids now that love jazz, but for me, yeah. it, it always felt like the kind of thing it was like black coffee or the newspaper, where you just kind of have to grow into it. Yeah. And one day you would get it. It's like whiskey. It's like one day you would take a sip and it wouldn't taste like shit, and it wouldn't, and you just wow. you get it. Yeah. And you understand it, and it, it took maturity, and I hate that because it should have been something that was really easy to understand. It, it's it's just music. Yeah. And it should just kind of capture your heart, and I wish that it kind of people gate kept it. It felt like, and it yeah. felt very academic and rigorous, which mm. is weird because the original jazz cats were so free flowing and so kind of were people that were just kind of pouring their heart into an instrument, and it was it was really loose. So I think that yeah. I'm really grateful to work with people like Cisco and Luke. Who've translated it into a new terms that doesn't feel... Yeah. And it comes from them. Like, they're yeah. the guys that grew up in New York and Chicago and fucking, like, were around all of this young movement of music that, like, shaped them to be jazz musicians that can operate at the same wow. level as these other guys. And yeah. we're also just, like, a reflection of them yeah. um, that are able to help push that image and, and push them in front of more people that reflect you know the community that they're a part of growing up bouncing off what you were saying too like interestingly enough like i i think jazz it, it, it is so interesting that it traditionally is a genre i mean i guess not traditionally but like more recently is a genre that is often so locked in educational stance right because yeah. like it, it almost doesn't make sense because the genre is no, no. built off improv it, exactly. it, it's, built, it's built off yeah. improvisation yeah. so it's like you can't having a genre yeah you can't teach exactly you can't teach that right yeah. so it's so interesting that like a genre that's built off of improv is kind of gate kept by something exactly. that's so anti improv right 100%. so rehearsed and colloquial and like proper yeah it's so fascinating right it's, but it, but it is so cool to see people like I mean, Cisco is a great example of that, as well as Luke, as well as, like, I think the Wolfgang guys are great, 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 great example of that, or, like, Corey Wong is a good example of that. Yeah. Like, artists like that, like, are bringing jazz to, like, a young audience, 100%. which is really, really, really cool. Mm -hmm. It's the best. It's, yeah. And it's fun to see because we, especially playing, Cisco's played a number of different jazz festivals in the past year that we've, like, had the honor of being a part of and just going to. Yeah. And it's so fun to be able to witness the kind of crowds that that are attending those sorts of things. When we play Monterey, that's going to tend to be a bit more of an older crowd, and yeah. classic crowd. People have been going there for years. But then you do some like Brick Jazz Fest in Brooklyn, and it's like a, a, t a really yeah. different kind of audience, and you see a lot of... You'll get like Wolfpack fans and stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And different kinds of people that are just sort of... It, it's really cool. I think that... And it's also... It transcends genre at a certain point. For sure. And I stopped getting so caught up in those words and just having I to agree. find the music. And I don't, I stopped caring. It doesn't matter what. Yeah, I feel like he yeah, is. For sure. The same folks that appreciate what someone like Wakai is doing are the same folks that yeah. appreciate something that Cisco is doing. Totally. It goes back and forth. You know, if we're able to bridge the gap for, you know, a hip hop artist to get into the jazz lane yeah. or a jazz artist to get into the hip hop lane, like, right now that's something i think we can definitely stand on and like we're hoping to bridge that cap across the board you know? yeah that's beautiful that's that, that's so so cool yeah. um what do you guys think would be your biggest frustration with the current music industry 
ask people that exist in it every single day. Around the horn. Yeah, like start. what do you think is the biggest frustration? Horn. I'll start. Oh, Lack of artist development. All right, you, you continue. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I think mine is, and it's been a, a hot topic recently, but I think like feeding into this, the, the yeah. speed. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, eh, a bit. It's the speed at which music is is created. Yeah, interesting. And yeah. I, and and, and yeah. not necessarily. And I'm not not to say that like there aren't legendary artists from the dawn of time that whipped up music in seconds. But mm -hmm. I think that it's scary to think about music being such a thing. It's like it's churned out in a way that's very repro. You can reproduce it. Yeah. I don't like to think about music as being something that any kind of layman can produce yeah it, it, it should be special and I think that you could never use any digital or AI resource to recreate you know an Aretha Franklin song or a Joni yeah. Mitchell song or a Bob Dylan song or a BB King song you could never hmm. make that with a computer there's just too much human in it and so I think my biggest yeah. frustration now is well wow. people's general affinity for music and, and and not to like I don't want to peg it on genres, but but if you just think about like think about like hyper pop, think about the kind of like yeet Playboy Cardi atmosphere of hip hop, like that kind of world, like how digital it feels and how kind of it's very it's it's very computer. Yeah. And and, and that that frustrates the fuck out of me because it, it it feels like there's just not um there's not the feel of a human. Yeah. And I and, and it, it's killing me. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Interesting. No, I I I think I feel that to a big degree as well. But I also think like I grew up so chronically online that there is a part of me that loves that. Yeah. Like just in terms of like the way in which we're able to connect people like that we would never otherwise been able to meet. Right. Like I don't know. Like I I'm I'm biased in this regard. I think it. it I think I think of this a little bit different because I'm not a musician. Right. Well, I am, but like not like a. Not like that kind of musician, I suppose. But like, uh, I mean, I, you guys are the 120th person that I've spoken to in music, be it an artist or industry person, and for like a, over a hour and a half long period about like very specific qualms with like what they do and like things that they love, et cetera, et cetera, like very deep topics. But like, I probably would have known two of those people without the internet, you know? So that, I think that's a, that's a flip side, at, at least like the way that I think about it's it a not lot. About the internet as it pertains to the mm. industry it's about as it pertains to the music gotcha the creation gotcha of the okay music. i think that social media networking and, and digital communication between people is wonderful yeah but it's it's the ability to recreate music mm. that's starting to worry me and, and the formula yeah and being able to yeah. tell a computer hey like i just don't and 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 maybe people might disagree i know kip yeah did the other day but I don't think you could tell a, an AI, hey, could you make a record that, that hits the same way that like, both sides now Joni Mitchell hit? Yeah. Great example. Yeah. Do that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really don't think it could. Well, and I hope that, that I'm yeah. right. Yeah. I, 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 I fully agree but with that. But if you said, hey, can you make, uh -huh. you know, whatever the mo number one chart topping song right now today is in America, it'd probably be, do a pretty bang job of doing it. It'd probably yeah. be good. Right? Why did you, did, did you uh, disagree, Kip? What do you think? My argument was that um, one day, maybe five to ten years from now, mm -hmm. I could play an I2 songs back to back that he's never heard of before and he wouldn't be able to detect, depict uh, which one was AI. But yeah. that's different because that's And one is AI, one's real? That, yeah. that, that, that's, that's replication and not production of an original thing. If you told an AI to make both sides now, copy it. I trust a, it's just like I trust a printer to print. But not I, copy. I'm saying like an original work that could actually. My thing was. It's like if you pitch them to a new artist. Here's what I was saying. I was saying Spotify or any uh, DSP platform that can, that does literally uh, absorb all of our um, analytical information on what we prefer as users could potentially create a song that would probably be your favorite fucking song ever. yeah with ai <laughs> probably and, yeah. and that like undeniably like yeah. if they played me the song i might have actual human emotion response to because of what they know about me whether they know what chord progressions i like what 
topics I like lyrically, whatever, that they're a tone of they voice. They may data. be able to connect, collect enough data to make an actual uh, hormone psychological uh, impression on me. Yeah. However, there's an element of music that I was saying during our conversation that is my appreciation for an actual artist behind the music yeah. that carries through where like for there sure yeah. are artists that i love wholeheartedly that may make a song that i may not actually like that much yeah. but because i love them as an artist i'm gonna ride with them to the end of my days yeah. so you need to face it's a fine line it. you know what i'm saying so yeah. there may be a song that an ai can create that would be my favorite song but because i don't know who's behind it it may only be my favorite song for right, so a couple let's pivot months. Though. Yeah. Qualms in the music industry. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go off that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I I think the only reason why I I think that like AI cannot replace human music, and this kind of in tandem with what you were saying. I think as long as we are consciously aware of the fact that something is made by an AI and not by a human, we will not have the same visceral response that exactly. we have to the relation of a human exactly. because it's not yeah. a human being. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. saying it could replace it. I was yeah. saying that a, an AI could make a song that would affect me emotionally For sure. in the same way that yeah. an artist that I care about could, but I wouldn't. it wouldn't well, last. Yeah. That's kind of what he's saying. Uh -huh. But I'm saying it wouldn't last because there's no, there's nothing face. behind it. Yeah. There's no staying power. Just because like, in the same way yeah. that there's a song that an artist I really fuck with would come out with and I would listen to it nonstop yeah. for months, but after a while, I may be like, okay, this is a memory now, and this isn't like yeah. something I listen to every day. Okay, I feel so, like but it's still something that I would come back to and be like, yeah. oh my God, I love this artist. Like, let me like, just hear this because of memory. But I wouldn't come back to this AI song and be like, oh my God, like, I love this artist. It would, it would only be like, I love this it would be like this algorithm. vibe of like, yeah. this is insane. Like, a fucking robot made this. Like, it would just yeah. be a different emotion. Yeah. But I, I do believe that like, the technology is getting so advanced that they could, with data, understand like, what grinds my gears. Do you think we should have to disclose like Absolutely. what is AI and what is not? Well, I, I, I mean, think we songwriting should. credits should always exist. That's yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like, sure. songwriting credits yeah. are just a given, and if a song is made by a computer, yeah. then you'll just credit the computer. What do you think about things that are not songs? Like, what about like? I saw this. This scared the fuck out of me as a filmmaker. I saw this. Uh, this like really, really very like it was a beautiful, beautiful like landscape shot of something that like. Like the discrete imperfections felt human. Yeah. Like, like it, 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 it was like a video of like a couple on a beach. And there was a beautiful sunset in the background, and the couple was like running, kind of like like very very like dynamically, like further and then closer to the camera, right? And they weren't in the rule of thirds. Like, like it, it wasn't like a perfectly composed shot. And there was like an Instagram video, and it was like, "Is this AI?" And I was like, "No, there's no fucking way it's AI because it's like you see the human movements, like in the way that the human is like shaking with the camera, and you see the human imperfections in the way that their heads are not always in the third." And it was it was AI, and Did AI it like had emotion within you. What would you say? Did it inflict emotion? A lot. You? So a lot. I scare yeah, you that it terrifying. is an art yeah. form to be able to prompt AI to create something like that. I already. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, like, what is, like, the... the I, I, I'm on like, the same page. Like, what are you... Like, what depth is there in the prompt? You're just, like, using correct adjectives? Like, I just feel like at a certain point, you're just, like, describing something super, you know, acutely. You ever seen war like, games? What did you say? You ever seen war games? I've heard of project? it. That's that's about, like, the algorithm that, like, was, shoot, was shooting the lawn. Or was shooting the uh, the bomb, right? Yeah. It was about, like, a kid who discovered a... It was, like, he I, hacked into the government computer. I have seen that. video game that ended up kind of triggering almost, like, a war. I watched it in my, in, my, uh, in, in my sophomore year world history class. I watched yeah, that. Yeah, but there was... A, but the whole thing was, like, the, the sort of essence, the computer that he started communicating with was the sort of immortalized son of this kind of scientist whose son had passed away. And he sort of yeah. kind of put his remembrance of him into a computer and it became this entity that had its own decisions and whatnot. And you sort of think about that as far as art goes as well. If a computer has, I mean, not sentience, but if they can create- Like art, some level of consciousness. I mean, it, can, it has the capability to impact somebody. Yeah. Just point blank. But I think Kip's right. 
is that as, as long as you can't put it's never going to eliminate no the human. for sure you yeah. know what I'm there will always be a level that's like okay yeah like there's a computer behind it like that makes it unfair or it makes it like this is something that a human couldn't create so of yeah. course like it's easier to do so now if i'm seeing a human do something that is untouched by ai yeah. i am also inclined to believe that that is extremely impressive but i just personally believe that like it's just a, not necessary but it's just the natural next step of like the human race to yeah. advance to higher forms of consciousness and we're getting to a crazy topic here but like no i i, I agree with you though yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like technology yeah. and where we're at right now it's like it's able it's to advance, produce man. things yeah. that are literally not possible maybe possible but not possible on a like human level to create and i don't think that we shouldn't be able to experience those things just because it's not human or yeah. allow it to affect us emotionally mm. but like it should be understood that like the art form of humanity is being stripped away from it a little bit yeah do you know my, what i'm saying i know what you mean it hurts a little bit to understand yeah. but i don't know like i think like like the biggest thing for me is like i think as long as we are conscious and aware of the fact that it wasn't made by a human we will not be able to relate to it in the same way that we relate to a human because i think like for example like, i mean i don't like i think this is personally but also like objectively i think like we relate to so much art because of the people behind it as you were saying right like i you know if i'm listening to a um if i'm listening to a a, a, a bright eyes song and i relate to the song because i know the band is behind it right and i know like what the band has done in the past like the way in which like maybe i might be similar to these artists or yes. i might be different from these artists i'm relating to them because they're human beings right and they have had human experiences that i've also had a ai will never have those human experiences Bro, right so let's, let's say like it, is my question like, yeah it's, it's all technology yeah no painter, no musician has ever made a piece without the technology implemented yeah. of the paintbrush or FL Studios or the guitar True. or yeah. the drum set. Uh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if, if, if there wasn't a paintbrush and a canvas, who is going, like, they, they weren't yeah. going but, to make art that simply, persuades you. But having something as simple as a, as a wooden stick with bristles on the end and paint on the tip of it hmm. and a canvas is so different from being able to go create a beautiful mountain no, landscape <laughs> no, no, no. and then that yeah. popping up it's like there's a certain of course but it's technology but as advanced over time art. and now i will looks, say but, but now will, they're that's making not art yeah. but, anymore but now I, there, there's opportunities to create things that yeah. are literally impossible to create otherwise. Can, so, can you can like somebody a google video the of mario <laughs> mario could you do me a favor and, could you google the definition of art I will say though, I think people I'm said serious. the exact no, same. So, no, Wait, I, I will say though, I think people have said the exact same thing that you're saying about sampling, and I think we would I all here so. agree that sampling is right? No, 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 no. You don't think so? It can't be. I feel like I actually would agree with us. Yeah, I, I think you're, sampling you're takes so much. Right <laughs> if you tell me like, like no one could create a video of like sampling's hard. You do that. Shit. I agree. No, I agree. Somebody it's super hard. Do yeah. that. Like it's so easy for me to go to a computer Bro, and say do this. Have you yeah. ever do the whole have thing? Have you ever prompted no AI? Yeah. Have you prompted AI properly? Yes. I don't. I haven't seen any fucking artwork done. By <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't care. I don't think that that's. Uh, why would I want to? I don't think that it's it, because it, you can yeah. create art that moves people. Still, no, I'm not saying it's, it's more impressive. Not it's art. less impressive. In my it's opinion, it's not art. But I just think like you can create. I, yeah, I, I'm not even saying that. Like I prefer this. I'm just saying that like it is undeniable that the ability is there to create. Uh, Visual art that evokes art emotion that ev uh, evokes emotion and is impossible to create with the human hand. I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's possible. Pop and that, yeah. like, that it's, sucks though. Yeah, we shouldn't enable that. 
I'm not saying we should enable it either. I think the human should always be cherished over that. I think robots but can I relate don't to think robot that art. We should just be like, you know, like fuck <laughs> this shit. Yeah. I'm saying that like it's okay to be emotionally. But you have to be careful it. about how much you let something in. It's, it's not like a robot's just coming up with it though by itself necessarily. It's like there are people behind it at the end of the day that are are have a vision in mind that are like, let me use this new technology well, to create I, this vision. I think I, I see what you're saying, but I think there's a very big difference from like me saying like, ChatGPT write me a poem about this woman I'm in love with, and then the, that's very different yes. from me saying like. AI edit the cuts on this podcast, right? Because like, yes. there's still a very human conversation here that yeah. we've been having for the past two mm. hours, right? Like, there's a human element to that, and then I use AI as a tool to supplement the very monotonous, repeatable parts that can be right. that can be like repeated by like simple computer script, right? So like that, I think there's still a level of artfulness that, to that, right? But like, because I don't we're recycling. AI, yeah, right? yeah. We're using what is known already as a database, and we're then kind of basing our new creation off of that, right? So, like, this is really meta, but like AI couldn't do this, right? Yes. Like AI couldn't sit here and like replicate this conversation, or could they? They could, if they had enough reference points of this <laughs> conversation, they would. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's crazy. I can't. That's what I'm saying. I can't. Do, this is. I will never deny the capability. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say with Nair, like in our previous conversation. It's like, I agree with you. Humans will always make superior art than AI, no doubt. Like people, the human race will always cherish that more. I yeah. never think it'll convert over. But there's no way I'm gonna fucking stand on that an AI can't <laughs> inflict, <laughs> in, can't can't create a conversation, a podcast, a work of art that would evoke emotion and mm. that would uh, that would be powerful. I think it's very possible from a technological standpoint in order uh, that that AI can create that. Knowingly or unknowingly, like, do you think the 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 discrepancy that it's AI matters to how much. It, it, regarding how much it affects us, because I think it does on a, for sure. To the on a consumer right level, yeah. yeah, it does. On a right? consumer yeah. level, right for, but who knows? Yeah. Like later on, it may not. I wonder if like this conversation will age really bad in ten years. People will say we're like discriminating against AI. They no. could. <laughs> I think the human Fuck race. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck maybe it's on crowd that we're <laughs> right got now. something against it, but it's crazy, man. There's these, these new kids are. Yeah. Uh, are, are different. What do you think, like, 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 if there was a AI FL bot that could say, like, let's make a... There are. Yeah, that's a, that, you're I right. I had yeah. a little roommate that worked for a company that made AI, uh, it was an AI, like, producing platform. Like, it would just, like, you would, you would type in, like, this song you're trying to create and it would just spit it out. And, and there would be, like, people behind the scenes that would, like, record a bunch of notes and shit. But then it would just take it and be like, oh, I know, that's you know, terrifying what emotion you're trying to evoke. And which is great. I feel like that's so contrary to everything that I love. That's so scary. Mm-hmm. It's okay. so yeah. scary. I, I honestly but don't think. But it could still evoke emotion. I don't you think. Know. For it sure. It will yeah. never replace it. It will never. I can't replace it. It will yeah. never replace musicians as a full skill thing. That's what I was trying to say. Like, because the people behind it always matter. For yeah. People. Like, for I'm, sure. We're a fan of artists, not just music. That's, that's well said. Like, if yeah. you're a producer and you're trying to get loops, like, maybe that's something that could help. But on, like, a For sure. I mean, it already level, is. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it already is a thing. Like, yeah. if you're a producer and you're like, okay, like, I'm looking for sad chords. And that is not different than Splice. No, no. Theoretically. Exactly. Like, that's a, that would be a great tool. If yeah. I was a producer, I would very much like that. If I could just type there's in a the emotion I'm trying to, I'm into right Trying now. to find yeah. a sound. And or a, like a specific loop, and just being able to create a whole beat with the true, with yes, the, with a sentence. You know, you shouldn't just be able to type a couple sentences into a platform and have it spit out your whole song and then yeah. you release that and take credit. For this sort of no. goes back to what I was saying with labels corporatizing the idea of art and making it non-emotional, because it's very similar, right? Like. AI sort of takes the emotion out of art. If I was writing a song that's like very, very, very emotional and, cur- and like personal to me about like, let's say just like theoretically like the passing of a loved one, right? When I'm in the room writing that song, I'm gonna be in a very emotional state, very vulnerable. If I told AI write a song about my loved one that passed away, there's no emotion yeah. shared there. And that takes away from, I think, what makes art art. 
Like there is traumatic experiences behind it. art. I they think. have access to a bunch of people that experience that and then can yeah kind of replicate it. It's just like I, I, my main ar- I, my main argument is just like yeah if 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 an AI song drops and it it cures example X is depression. Like, it's the song it of valid? It's the song of the is summer. Is it not like it's or it's the song of the summer. Check me out really quick. Is it not valid? The definition of art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. Human. The word human is in there. The word human is in the it's definition. In the definition. It's yeah. just, and, so, yeah, and so I, mean, I don't I just I think don't think I think that AI creations cease to be artistic yeah I mean it's like looking at the definition of a sound and fucking knowing that like it has to be received in order for it to be a sound and saying if a tree falls in the woods it doesn't make sound what you just said makes no sense doesn't make sense (laughs) what how does that apply to what I just said it applies what you're saying because you're saying like a human has to be behind art for it to be art but if some if if yes. an, if a robot, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. I know, but I'm saying if a robot or AI creates art, even if it has a human prompting it behind it, that you're saying that now that doesn't if that affects someone emotionally and, and revokes the same response that a human. I mean, either way, it's human made still. Like, uh, uh, no, it's like half human made. Quarter human made. It's like toying with your emotions. It's the same way like our phones are designed to hack our neurological systems. You feel me? It's like not art. I think uh, I think it could be argued that AI works it within the definition art. that he's saying. We read the definition again. Well, no, because it's, What's the it's human. Like human. I mean, like human, human was in the word okay, there. But who implemented AI into the art? Oh, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like AI is implemented as a tool within but who music. Who drew that and tree in that in that painting? If I say draw a landscape, who drew that? But ultimately, Nobody. AI can't like a human do anything. Prompted it. Yeah. I, uh, AI Nobody. is not. Who drew but it's it? it's drawing off of human references is the argument. But it, it's but not about who yeah. it. It's it? Was, it, what does it say? Read it. It says create. If a human created it by any means necessary, the vi- is it art? So. Yeah, the various branches of creative activity, creative, such as painting, music, literature, and dance, the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. AI is damn near created by the human race, and the prompt is created by humans that then makes the artwork. I mean, just how the paintbrush is created by a human to then manipulate and use art. Of course, it's different. Yeah, I mean, like, it, 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 it's very, like, give and take, right? I just, like, I think the biggest thing for me is the discrepancy. Like, will we have to disclose the things are made by AI? Because I think that is, like, literally the biggest, like, difference. Mm. If we have to disclose that shit is made by AI, like, you're right. It, it will never replace human art, right? But if some way we don't have to disclose technically that things were created by AI and we deem AI to be, like, a I subsection yeah. of like person right yeah and we don't have to disclose that it's like made by ai i think there's a world where it fundamentally it becomes very 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 tricky when we don't have to disclose yeah. things made by ai i guarantee I, yeah. there's a song on the top 100 billboard charts that had yeah. ai to do and it's it like it'll be like a mystery it'll be like oh my god how far do we go before we have to disclose it or, or it's like a. I wonder. The laws if always are late to the game when it comes to this shit. That's like, true. It'll be like shit will start moving, and then they're gonna have to kind of move the lead. Oh, I hate and I also long. think yeah. there's certain, I feel it, dude. certain genres where like that matters more. Like true for hip hop, if you're not writing your raps, it's not gonna fly. If yeah. for pop, if you have an AI generate your shit. There's probably a little bit more leads. It's flown. It's flown for a long time that you don't have to write your apps. I mean, a lot of yes songs that you listen and to. no. Depends feel, on what, what your metric you is. Literally, like that's been I mean, a, that's been fair for a long time. I I feel Jay-Z like Jay Z wrote Dr. Dre's verse on "Forgot About Dre." Right, but when you find that type of information and out, it does it does yeah. not seem like a good look. I don't think so. I think it's dope. 
for I don't think it's hip hop for for, <laughs> for both. Right? Yeah. I feel like I, I made a good song. Ghost writing doesn't allow AI. It's like, what's the fucking difference? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so different. I'm it's like, I'm unimaginably like, different. I also do, but I do agree with you. Like, like I one think of them is two human I, beings making a song. The yeah. other is a computer making an entire song by itself with a computer. I think genre is a huge role in it though, too, though, right? Because like, it. I feel like no one really gives a fuck in pop music, but in like rap or also in like punk music. People are going to be very, very, very contrarian. There's more to of the a idea. human element that's needed with that type of music. I would argue that, like, those two, those two genres specifically, right? Like, punk music, like, dude, I went to so many hardcore shows around when I was a kid where I was like, this fucking music sucks. Like, technically, there's nothing interesting about this hardcore music, but, like, the ex- like, like the expulsion of emotion yeah. that, like, I'm experiencing in this moment collectively with all these other people in this shitty ass warehouse is why I'm here it's not because of the technical skill or the songwriting of the music right same with rap rap is very similar yeah. rap is a very competitive genre rap is a very like human genre it's a very it, like, it's, it's, well, it's it, also very it's collaborative born out of struggle yeah it's very collaborative as well but I mean th- th- that's very human right yeah exactly so it's like yeah I, I agree with you so it's like I don't know if like AI will be deemed the I same. The same I think I agree with you. Yeah, I, 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 I think it, AI nice. will not be deemed the same in like punk and rap music as it will in like pop music. Right. You know, where like pop music is like very often engineered for success. I think music is going to be one of the hardest, uh, one of the hardest art forms for AI to, yeah, to come into yeah. play be- because of what I was saying about how dance. important Tattoo? it is to appreciate and <laughs> obviously I'm just like dance, yeah. no. but like to appreciate like an artist behind the music is such a vital element of yeah. appreciating music in general. But I could also see a crazy visual and have no idea like who's behind it and yeah. be extremely affected by it. Oh, like, what sure. about what about an AI movie? <sighs> That movie could be fucking gas. Like, I, <laughs> it's like it could still affect me emotionally, and I'm not gonna argue against that. Like, yeah. I guarantee you, if someone put on an AI movie and didn't tell us, there's a possibility where we'd be like, "Holy shit, that was one of the most fire movies I've ever seen." Why does that? Yeah, the director. I agree with you, but why does that not? Like, like I don't, 